Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here to Yoast Ice Arena. Thank you so much for spending your Friday night with us. Saturday night. I know what day it is. We've got a good one here in Michigan taking on Notre Dame. I'm Kendall Spencer, and I do know what day it is. Joining me is Kobe Siegel, and William Gregory, Gregory will be joining us in the second and third periods. Wolverines in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament. Last night, they defeated the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. But it was not an easy one, Kobe. Tell us about last night's game. Well, uh, last night's game was kind of um, was kind of flipped from what we've seen from this this Michigan team all year. Um, they start off in the first period uh, very well. Second period uh, was a little rough. Uh, Notre Dame certainly won the second period. Uh, Jake Barczewski let up a few soft goals, but in the third period and really really at the end of the second period uh, when Drew Bavaro hit uh, hit James Casey from behind, got the major penalty, and Wolverines came right out in the third period, scored in the first 10 seconds, and, and then scored later on the power play. So, I mean, usually it's, uh, it's Michigan that's kind of blowing these third period leads, but last night, they had a great third period. Good to see. Absolutely. Wolverines rocking with their second line to start. That's Dylan Duke, Frank Nazar, and Josh Ernesty. Defensive pairing of Truscott and Casey. Notre Dame, on the other hand, they'll start their first. Landon Slagert, Cole Knubel, and Patrick Moynihan. Defense, Ryan Seedham, Jake Boltman, and Ryan Bischel in goal. Face-off taken, won by the Fighting Irish. Bounce up the boards to Moynihan. Hit from behind by Truscott, but Slaggart recovers it. Passes up the ice, nothing going though. Wolverines will take it. Ernesty up the right hand side. Dump and chase. Recovered. Well, he's kicked out of the zone by Notre Dame. But Marshall Warren in to receive it back into the Notre Dame zone. To Notre Dame defender, big hit there. Notre Dame tries to get it out of their defensive zone. Marshall Warren knocks it back in again. It was a big hit by Brinley. Notre Dame trying to get into Wolverine's offensive zone. They do. It's Hunter Strand. Puck circles around the boards. Wolverine's trying to recover it. Ali. Wolverines have it in the zone. Strand. No, Dame has it in the zone. My mistake. Strand. Bastard match with Domenico. Long shot from the point. Rebound isn't taken care of. Immediately, as Wolverines have to come up to get it. Luckily, they're able to get it out of the zone. Rucker McGroarty loses control of it, though, at the logo. Dump and chase again. Borchewski with a night, uh, with an, with a night save of the early on a shot. No, Dame scored earlier. Long shot from the left point by the younger slagger, and then there'll be some extra after school curriculars, extracurriculars. Chippy, Chippy series, as you mentioned it, uh, last night's game, big decisive penalty in the Wolverines' favor. I don't expect to see him playing nice tonight on either side. Yeah, I mean, uh, Barczewski going, going right at it with, with uh, slaggers. Certainly a, a, a matchup to watch. Davis and Hughes on the faceoff, won by Davis. Trevor Janicki turns around and launches a shot, hits off somebody's legs, no good. Irish recover, hitting it around the boards. They'll have to dump Chase. Pocket picked by Hughes, passes it back to Duke. Duke to Holtz, Holtz back to Duke. Looking for TJ Hughes at the logo, no good, but Wolverines regain possession until they lose it again. Very chippy in the neutral zone thus far. And that'll be a penalty. Or, yeah, that'll be a penalty. That is on number 26, Zach Plasinski, for tripping. And now here comes the Michigan power play. They scored three power play goals last night. The game turned on its head on the power play last night. So if Michigan can uh, get out to to a lead, they can really put the pressure on 
on uh, on the uh, Irish. Wolverine's power play unit: Hughes, McGrory, Duke, Casey, and Brindley. Face off one by the Wolverines. Casey puts a shot in from up close. No good. Able to be cleared by Landon Slaggart. My apologies, that penalty is actually on number 25, Carter Slaggart. Brindley taking it back into the zone himself, passes it off for Hughes. Hughes looking for Casey, a bit too slow to the point. The blue line there, Landon Slaggart means it tips it away. McGroarty on the right hand side, inside the Wolverine zone once again, passes it to Casey. Back to McGroarty. McGroarty down low on the right side to Duke, back up to McGroarty. Casey at the blue line. Pass cross ice to Brindley, long shot, no good. Covered by Casey. Looking for Hughes in front, just a bit too much on that one. He can't get it, and he goes into the boards hard, riding on top of a Notre Dame defender. Bit of an awkward play there as Barcheski slows things down a bit on the other end. Nazar up the right-hand side. Leaves it for Shivsky. Gets knocked out. Prescott has to collect it. Trying to set something up again. Moldenauer. Back off for Shivsky. Shivsky cross ice pass for Estapa. Estapa to Truscott back at the blue line. Back to Estapa. Moldenauer back to Nazar. Nazar looking for Shivsky. Intercepted by Strand. Sent back down to Barchevsky. Just about 20 seconds remaining on the Wolverines power play. Ten seconds, Wolverines finally enter the zone. Long, awkward shot from Draper, easily knocked aside by Bischel. Stays in the Wolverine zone. Notre Dame returns to full strength. Ernesty circles it around the board. Warren coming up to collect. There's a slagger in the way, passes it back up. The ice, Wolverines have control in their own defensive zone. Trying to slow things down and get something set up. Ethan Edwards. Long pass meant for Draper. He can just tip it in and that'll be an icing. Yeah, and, and on that power play, uh, Notre Dame uh, really focusing on getting into the passing lanes. Michigan had a, a couple passes where uh, they pass it behind them and uh, Notre Dame in, in intercepted them. Absolutely. Good, def much better defensively on the penalty kill there for Notre Dame than we saw last night. Wolverines back in the offensive zone. Tyler Duke rings it up the boards before he gets hit. Strand playing tough down low. Duke gloves it out of mid midair. Pass up to Brindley. But some tough defense from Janicki since he can't get anything going. Notre Dame's been really scrappy along the boards, and the Wolverines turn it over. Ali shot off the boards. Barczewski will play it, passes it pretty much directly to the stick of Justin Janicki there. Luckily, the Wolverines recover. Shivsky trying to cross ice pass. Dangerous. Intercepted by Davis. Luckily, his shot went wide. Wolverines haven't managed to clear it yet. Stumbling Ali will take the puck out of the zone himself. Cross ice pass to Holtz. Holtz slaps it in. Picked up by Moldenauer on the left hand side. He's got, he's got an opportunity, no good. Luca Fantilli coming up for a shot from the blue line. Knocked aside on the stick side by Bischel. Here comes Carter Slaggart. Cross ice to Seedum, bounces off his stick, and then Casey, Wolverines regain possession. Moldenauer passes off to Hughes. Hughes over to Duke. No good. Notre Dame will take it up once again. Notre Dame loses possession of it. Casey trying to clear. It gets hit by a fighting Irish defender. They just get up to Hughes. Hughes up to Duke. Duke through two defensemen, long shot, rebound, dangerous. 
Ernesty had a chance to tip, tip it in there. Unfortunately, just couldn't get it off the stick. Notre Dame manages to get it out of the zone, but doesn't take possession of it. Ernesty to Nazar into the offensive zone. Nazar long off the back of the boards. No good long shot from Truscott. Fighting for possession of it behind the net. Wolverines come away with it. Pass right in front of the net to Ernesty. Duke second chance, no good. Two great opportunities there from the Wolverines. That's nice by Notre Dame. And Josh Ernesty wide open in for the net, just couldn't elevate the puck to get it uh, past Bischel and that's by far the best opportunity of this game. I'd like to say really quickly as well that Notre Dame has three sets of brothers on this team, so I'm trying to use first names when I remember. I guess that's the most sets of brothers in It looks the like there's NCAA. only two of them playing, the Slaggerts and the Janikis, trying to differentiate. Wolverines have it behind their own net, lose control of it. Notre Dame coming up now. Good chance for them. Knubel behind the back, back pass looking for Fisher. Just a bit too much on it though. Back to Knubel behind the net. Knubel finds Slager right in front. He whiffs on it. Bavaro, I think that was a shot attempt and it's wide left and high. Yeah, and Bavaro scored one last night um, on not really a hard shot. He, he just kind of threw it at the net and it uh, it went in. So uh, so tonight I certainly would expect him to do kind of the same thing. He he just kind of did that there. Just uh, just flipped it near the net, but that that got tipped. Notre Dame wins the faceoff. Bavaro slap shot and in. From the blue line, Notre Dame gets out ahead. About nine minutes in, eight minutes in to the first period. And Drew Bavaro, <laughs> that's, that's his third goal from that spot, that, that top of the uh, blue line. Um, and he goes high left. On, uh, on Barczewski and Bavar has been <laughs> kind of the X factor of this series so far. Bit of a soft one, just manages to trickle in past Barczewski and the Wolverines will have to make this game another comeback if they want to close this series off in two. Notre Dame wins the opening, wins the face off, off that goal. Gets in the zone, doesn't manage to do anything with it. Wolverines knock it back. Notre Dame will have to start over. Pass up for Carter Slager. Finds Tramper Janicki into the chest of Barczewski. He'll glove it. And uh, Barczewski, the, uh, that first goal in last night, had some trouble with these kind of uh, softer shots and uh, in Michigan oh, 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 overcame it last night. Let's see if they can do it again. Face off in the Wolverine zone, left face off circle. One by Strand. Back to Seedham, Seedham cross ice. Looking for Justin Janicki. He doesn't have it in the gut of a Wolverine defender. Back to Strand, up to Boltzmann. Boltzmann back down looking for Janicki. Ali has to come up and try and get it though against Warren. It slips between his legs. Strand puts one up and off the crossbar, I believe. Notre Dame keeps it in though. Seedham stumbles but still is the puck. Even after falling to the ground. Luckily it comes out on the stick of Warren. Tries to knock it out. Doesn't manage to. He'll come up and get it himself. Wolverines dump it into the offensive zone.
Notre Dame trying to slow things down from behind their own net. Shifsky playing pretty tough. That's Seedham. And the crowd here doesn't like his stalling. Long pass up the ice for Knubel from Boltman. Knocked out of the Wolverine zone. Knocked back in. Edwards will pass out to McGroarty. McGroarty cross ice for Shifsky. Long shot attempt, no good. Bounce off a defender. McGroarty whiffs on one. Fisher taking it the other way. Dumps it in. That's nice. Yeah. And a nice play by Barczewski on that ice. Just letting the puck go right past him. If he touched it, it would not have been a nice, but nice little play by uh, by by Barczewski. Notable stat, Notre Dame six face-offs to Michigan's two. Wolverines win this one, however. Long shot by Fantilli, rebound attempt by Ernesty. Neither good, still in the Wolverine zone, though. Duke sending it along the boards. Nazar looking for somebody in front. Bounces off a couple skates, and Notre Dame comes away with it. Mastro Domenico's got it lost in his feet. Ernesty takes it away. Right-hand side, long shot off the stick of Bischel. Goes all the way down the ice. Fantilli collects it. Fantilli dumps it in. Comes away in the hands of Trevor Janicki. For it's taken away. Draper has it now. Trying to slow things down, get something set up. Passes it back along the boards. Back up for Warren on the blue line, hits it off the legs of LaPointe. Knocked out of bounds, not, not out of bounds, out of the offensive zone by Davis. Wolverines come away with it though, they'll just have to reset. Dump chase. Notre Dame starts on the offensive, Davis looking for Bjork, it's an offside. And uh, one player, one player from Michigan that's really got him. Uh, that's really got him some early looks in this game is uh, Josh Ernesty. Um, yeah, he's a, he's he's had a few really good opportunities. He's been right in front of the net, right where he needs to be. Um, and uh, uh, the Wolverines, I think, I mean, down 1-0, they're not really getting outplayed here. Just, just that one shot that went in the net. But, I mean. One area the Wolverines can look to improve is in the face-off circle. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean the, the face-off is really important in gaining a uh, possession, especially in uh, in the offensive zone. We'll take the face off at center ice. Carpenter versus Hughes. Bjork comes away with it. Worked hard by Tyler Duke, he loses the puck. Moldenauer comes to collect it. Before he gets his pocket picked by Fleming, back to Bjork. A little bit of a scramble for it, but Moldenauer comes away with it. Big hit attempt there by Ali. Can't quite manage to land one, however. I think they're gonna say that's gonna be a trip, I think. And yeah, he'll spend the next two minutes in the box. And I think, uh, and the <laughs> argument for uh, kneeing. Bjor oh, yeah, kneeing, yeah. Uh, coming across the ice, Bjork thought he had a 
clean hit, but he he really did get him like yeah. right he, on the knee, Moldenauer, yeah. Moldenauer pretty heads up there, kind of was looking like he was going to avoid it. But the Wolverines will have another attempt here on the power play. Face off one, back to Casey. Casey McGordy back up to Casey at the blue line. Down to McGordy at the right-hand side. They had to face the circle. Up to Casey, and it tips in! The puck takes an awkward angle, and the Wolverines have tied it 1-1. That was a long, loping shot by Casey, and I think that's going to be tipped in by TJ Hughes. And on the power play, great job by Seamus Casey. Sending the puck to the net. TJ Hughes had his... Yeah, he, oh, he that was tipped it. That was a beautiful redirect right in the air. I mean, just bat it out of the air. Just great hand-eye coordination. And take, I mean, that's just an incredible play by TJ Hughes. Wow. TJ Hughes found that one up high, managed to knock it over the shoulder of Bischel. And it's a 1-1 game with about eight minutes remaining in the first. And, I mean, Michigan has best power play in the entire country and I mean there's uh, there's really nothing Bishop can do if Notre Dame wants to win this game they gotta stay out of the box hurt them last night and it has hurt them big tonight so far and I hope my eyes deceive me oh. but I believe this is gonna be reviewed for a high stick yes and this Depending on who the hockey gods favor tonight, I could very clearly see going either way. Yeah, if they deem the stick was above the crossbar, then this is going to be overturned. See if we can tell on an angle. I don't know. It, does, it tips know. in high over Fischl's right shoulder. That looks like it might be below the crossbar I from that it, angle. I think it is. I, I think from the it, yeah from the angle we can see. I mean his his stick's going from low to high, so like you could uh, so so I think the officials definitely saw the stick get higher than the crossbar at some point. But where did he actually touch the puck? No, from our angle, I I think that looks pretty clearly like it. Where it hits is definitely below the crossbar. Yeah, I'm trying to follow the path of the stick. Oh, yes. I, I'm i pretty sure that's below the crossbar. I'm pr looks like a couple inches below. Here they come. And it remains. Stands, meaning not confirmed, meaning they couldn't see enough to change it, which is understandable because we couldn't see enough either. Yeah, no, from that angle, it's just, you kind of need like a perfect side by side, side angle and. Get the bodies yeah. in front of the replay camera. Yeah. But as it stands, this game is tied 1 1. Notre Dame will come away with it off the face off. Bit of a battle for it in the neutral zone. Janicki comes away with it to Strand. He'll lose control of it. Brindley collects it. Long pass up the ice. McGrory chasing him for it. Wolverines have in the offensive zone. That's a big hit into the boards. No call, but Shivsky is down. Yeah, it looks like he, yeah, I mean, Shivsky is, he, he, he got hit right in the back on the boards. I mean, that is a tough no call. His head went directly into the boards there, and he is slow to get up. And there's blood on the ice. Yeah, just a pretty dangerous play there. He'll head straight back to the locker room. No clue on the gravity of his injury, but head wounds do bleed a lot. So he would need to get something closed up anyway. Ref's talking it over with Slaggart and Truscott standing guard.
There's no penalty call on the ice. However, the play is under further review. So we'll get a couple minutes here as they look for something there and we clean up the ice a bit. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna get to see a replay here. I would doubt it, but. Yeah, not exactly the kind of play you reshow on the Jumbotron. Yeah, no. Unfortunately for us not. broadcasters up here, we don't have access to the replay room. Well, uh. Oh, we kind of do. <laughs> we we kind of do, actually. <laughs> yeah, we do kind of. We can see it on the Jumbotron, actually, because um, they're showing it. Oh, no, oh, they are gonna show it. it. Wow, okay. okay. Oh, that oh, yeah. should be a penalty. Oh, absolutely. Shivsky, so if you are able to see it, Shivsky did start falling into the boards himself. However, Mastro Domenico comes in and launches him into it. So Shivsky did trip, stumble, whatever. He was falling, but Mastro Domenico still kind of comes in and puts his body into him. Yeah, and the contact looked to be avoidable and I think yeah, that's going to be the question the yeah. that's going to be the question is whether or not Master Domenico could have avoided that hit especially once it was clear that Shivsky was going down yeah I mean it's 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 so tough because we're seeing it's it in slow mo to tell yeah it's we're really not down there tell. yeah but his 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 face was already on the boards before before he got hit Still a dangerous play, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Wouldn't, not expecting anything major, but I would still expect perhaps a minor. Maybe nothing. There were some controversial no calls in yesterday's game. This might be another one. Yeah. I mean, that, it, I mean, that it looks, looks like, like Mastro Domenico was trying to pull up a little bit even, but nowhere near enough effort went into that. In my humble opinion, I'm not a coach. I'm not a replay official. I am yeah, no. a girl with a microphone and a dream. <laughs> yeah, we need the uh, hockey equivalent. This is still the replay. Terry McCauley. This is still, we're still delayed because of the replay. The ice is fine. That's what's been taking us so long here. Yeah, I mean, be, uh, I mean because it's taking so long, I mean, I wonder if, I think you said I wonder if they're just going to give out a minor because maybe boarding. I don't know. We're going to get the announcement. And once again, yes, Shivsky was already going down. However, that does not mean that Master Domenico still can't be called for head contact. We'll, but we'll see here. Five-minute major for boarding. Yep. Wow. I was not expecting that, but I do, like, and I'm not just saying this as a Michigan broadcaster. I think that was the right call. I think that Mastro Domenico had the time to pull up from that. I think he's, Shifke was going down well before Mastro Domenico decided to kind of, you know, shove him in even further. Yeah, and I mean, uh, the last five in the, uh, now, because of the major, if, if Michigan scores one power play goal, they get to be on the power play for the entire five minutes, no matter what. So this could be huge. Power play unit, Casey, Duke, McGrory, Brindley, Hughes. Face off one by Hughes, up to Casey, back to Brindley. McGrory slap it from the right hand side. No good. Notre Dame man just knocked the puck, knocked the puck out. Lind and Slagger trying to make something happen. He loses his balance, however, and the puck. Wolverine's taking it back up. Casey, pretty toughly defended there. And there's an opportunity. For Knubel, he'll miss wide left. Lucky break for the Wolverines. He'll pick it back up. This time it's Duke. Duke dropping it off for Brindley. No good. Casey manages to keep it in the zone. McGordy has it outside the right face off circle by the boards. Back to Casey. Cross ice pass to Brindley. Brindley to Hughes behind the net. Back to Hughes. He'll turn around, try and put one in. 
No good, bounces out to Casey at the blue line. Back to Brindley, long shot. Off the pad. Bounces off a couple defenders, back to Casey. Cross ice to Brindley! And that is one of the most incredible saves I have ever seen. Ryan Bischel got it all the way over there to put the glove on that one. And what a momentum builder if you're the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I mean, if, if you're Gavin Brindley, I'm not sure how, I mean, McGordy, I mean, just, oh my God, coming from the right side to the left side, reaches out his glove. I mean, maybe he got it with his blocker too, but just a perfect save. It looked like McGordy had his spot picked. Bischel did the full splits to stop that one. Wolverines have to regroup. Moldenhauer behind the net to a point in front for Nazar. Nobody knows where it is till it comes out on the right-hand side. Notre Dame trying to get it out, and they do. Wolverines to start all the way from behind their own net. Still three and a half minutes on this five-minute major. Nazar dropping to LaPointe. Pass it back up for Nazar. Loses it, round the boards to a Stapa. Stapa from behind the net. Off the boards looking for Nazar. Strand comes up to knock it out. Um, I mean, Michigan has to realize, I mean, there's still three minutes left on this penalty. So, I mean, you, you got robbed of one goal, but there is still so much time. Brindley take it himself, dropping it off from McGordy. McGordy finds Duke right in front of the net. Pass over to Hughes into the gut of Bischel. Sliding across to make that save. And Duke was in the high slot. He had the uh, decision to pass to Hughes or shoot it himself. Uh, he chooses to pass to Hughes and Bischel reads it perfectly and makes a great save. First face off, no good. It's Hughes and Knubel. Knubel wins it. Can't manage to knock it out, however. Casey keeps it in. Cross ice pass McGordy on the right side. Long shot knocked away, and it looks like Duke might be tripped there by Bischel, but the shot by Brindley is in the pads of Bischel. Uh, five on three for Notre Dame would certainly not be ideal for them, but. Looks like there's not gonna be a call there, but certainly did look like Bischel may have had a hand in knocking Duke to the ground there. He is in Knubel again. Wolverines come away with it, back up to Casey on the left side of the blue line. Cross ice to McGordy. McGordy coming in, looking for Duke, long shot after the pass by Duke cross ice to Brindley. Saved once again by Bischel. Yeah, and once again, Duke making a pass to a prime shot opportunity right below the net. And, uh, and uh, Barczewski moving to his right. Once again, makes a save. Three really nice saves from Barchet I mean, uh, from Bischel here. Face off one by Notre Dame, but collected by the Wolverines. Truscott to Nazar. Estapa whips on it. Truscott will take a long one from the blue line. Can't manage to clear it from behind the net, however. Lots of bodies down there. There's a it's Fisher on the ground. No one wants to come away with it, it would appear. Fisher right. falls over and the puck comes out. Almost kept in by Truscott, just barely goes out. There's about two minutes remaining. That's textbook time wasting by Fisher. Nazar managed to just barely tap the puck across before Notre Dame knocked it out again. And there's not much going for the Wolverines on this power play, but all it takes is one. Casey coming up, guarded heavily by Carter Slaggart. He'll drop it back for Brindley. Brindley working through as many Notre Dame defenders as he can before he loses it. Back for Casey. Casey trying to find Duke. Instead, he'll find Seedham. Seedham trying to get it ahead to Janicki. Played by Varchevsky instead. Up to Casey. Casey to Brindley. Brindley will take it himself once again. Pass it off the side to Hughes. 
However, he's defended quite well by Placinski. Will Reigns get it again? McGroarty. Looking for a pass. He loses the puck and knocks out of the zone again. This was going to be a bit of a foot race. Carter Slager can't manage to win it, though. Puck just gets knocked ahead to Barchevsky. Really Back good to Casey. 30 seconds remain. Casey puts a little spin move on Lynn Slager. That one's good, but still, they haven't gotten into the zone yet. Marshall Warren in for TJ Hughes. Cross ice pass looking for LaPointe. No good, and it goes out again. Lynn Slaggart has it on the right-hand side. Puts a little shot on. Barczewski knocks it away easily. Ernesty bringing it up. 15 seconds left. All he manages to do is dump it in. And Notre Dame tries to come away with it. It was kept in by Warren. Back to Edwards to Warren. No good. Ernesty in. And no good there. And just like that, the five-minute major is over. Wolverines still have it. Long shot by Draper. Hit away by Bishop before it got lost a little bit. Wolverine still have it. Warren on the blue line, pass up for Edwards, long shot, no good, takes an awkward angle, loses a lot of momentum there. Still in the zone for the Wolverines. Ernesty behind the net. Moldenauer lost it. Notre Dame got out of the zone, Wolverines regained possession. Edwards in for Moldenauer again. Moldenauer coming in. Gloves it out of midair, and oh, he hits it off the left cro the crossbar. Bischel was completely out of the net. That would have been a highlight real goal, but it just hit off the left crossbar. He was a bit too far behind the net for that one. Minute and a half remaining in this first period. Davis shot. No good. Wolverines managed to get it out of Notre Dame hands, but not out of their defensive zone. Nazar loses it right in front of the net. Ali, then to Davis. Davis loses it, and then hands to Tyler Duke. Barczewski knocks it off his stick to Tyler Duke. Tyler Duke to Holtz. Long pass finds a Notre Dame defenseman. Just kind of playing back and forth through the neutral zones with it right now. Carpenter to Barczewski. He'll decide to glove it. And that, I mean, that scoring opportunity by Moldenauer. He uses his speed to get past two Notre Dame defenders on the outside, keeps his edge, cuts back, inside of Bischel who goes uh, flying to the right, flips the puck up, catches it, and then just shoots it off the post. Hughes and Carpenter on the face off. One by Hughes, cross ice pass to McGroarty from Casey. Bischel comes all the way out of the net to get that one. Placinski long pass to Bjork, picked by Casey in the neutral zone. He gets it into Brindley in the offensive zone on the right hand side. Pass cross ice for McGroarty. And it's in! A Notre Dame defender may have knocked that one in. The Wolverines 2 1 with 10 seconds remaining in the first. And the hand eye coordination of TJ Hughes comes up once again, just makes a diving stab at the puck, and it goes in. A great take to the net by Brindley. And TJ Hughes just going all out effort. Brindley had McGroarty in front for that one. His shot was no good, but by that point, Bischel was at such a wide angle that all TJ Hughes had to do was come in, dive for it, and get it off the stick of Pusinski and in the net. What an... And that's a challenge for offsides. Wolverines won the last challenge, and unfortunately, I see where... They're going for what they're going for. As it looked like Brindley may have been in the zone before the puck was. Hopefully they show us this replay. But I mean, this second goal would really kind of vindicate the first period play of Michigan because they have 
especially the I mean with the with the major penalty and the last sort of half half of this period it's been all Wolverines here so to come out with a with a 2-1 lead would be huge for Michigan and if you can escape with the tie Notre Dame like last night got dominated in the first period but the player if, Ryan Bischel if keeps this alive. if this holds it'll have the same first period result as last night and in the second, the Fighting Irish scored three straight. Hopefully it does hold, but the Wolverines have a bit of a different second period. 9.3 seconds remaining in the first. Shots 18 to seven in favor of the Wolverines. Thank you so much for joining us, if you're just joining us. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll talk, we'll talk about the first period for a, few, a little bit, then we'll take a quick break for the first intermission, and that is offsides. Yeah, brilliant. Just that is really offsides. Sees yeah. the pass when he's already in this game. That is um, very offsides. Unless from, there's another angle where just the tip of his blade is still on the blue line, that looked like it was offsides. Non-biased coverage here. I'll yeah. admit it. As I was saying, we'll take we'll talk about the second, the first period for a bit. Take a quick break. I'll hop off for the second. William Gregory will be taking my place. And I'll be back on in the place of Kobe Siegel for the third. Yeah, I think uh, the lack of replay from the Jumbotron kind of. They don't want to show that one know. again. No, yeah, no. I mean, I mean, refs look to be taking a long time, but I would, yeah, I think my guess would be offsides as well. There is a possibility that they can't find enough to overturn it, but from the angle they showed, it did look like it's offsides. But maybe there is another angle that shows like the. They seem to be taking a long time. Over this, they already had a failed challenge. So if this is a good goal, not only that, they'll also take a delay of game penalty. Yeah. And, and I think, based on the replay, I think uh, good risk by Notre Dame. And it stands. That's a good goal. We are shocked up here as, as broadcasters. But like you mentioned, that m blue line camera must show the faintest tip of Brindley's skate still on that blue line. Because from up here, it looked offside, but we will not complain. It's 2-1 Wolverines. 10 seconds left. And now they're on a power play. And the Fighting Irish will take yeah. a delay game. There's still a five on the ice. One's gotta go right. off, yeah. Yeah, there we go. And now a really, really a good chance from Michigan. Moynihan. Maybe not the first period, but second period to really take, take this game. There'll be 10 seconds here. They'll play out the rest of it. In the second, Moynihan will sit in the box. Face off one by the Wolverines. Casey up to Brindley. They're gonna get a shot off quick. No good, just barely past Duke who is streaking from the right-hand side. McGordy back into Duke. No good. Looks like Bishel may have whacked Duke with his stick there to end it. But that'll be the buzzer for the first period after 20. It's 2-1 in favor of the Michigan Wolverines over the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Kobe, what did you like from the Wolverines in that first period? Well, I liked uh, their pressure on Bischel. 18 shots. Um, I, I mean, only two goals to show for it, but Bischel was fantastic. Uh, the, the two goals were... Um, I mean, it's just really good hand-high coordination uh, by by T.J. Hughes. The first one, James Case is kind of threw at the net, and, and uh, T.J. Hughes had a fantastic redirect, and then just a mad scramble, uh, a, a mad scramble near the net, and T.J. Hughes full full dive to uh, to get the net to, to get the net. But I mean, that's what happens when you put constant pressure on. Uh, on Notre Dame, Bischel's not gonna save everything. He might give up uh, some rebounds, I think. Uh, Michigan definitely put 
puts lots of pressure on the on the Notre Dame uh, defense. Absolutely. We'll also take a brief moment to mention some other Big Ten quarterfinal quarterfinal action. Minnesota beat Penn State, winning that series earlier today. As of right now, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Wisconsin, the second seed. Ohio State upset them yesterday, and right now it is tied 1-1. And of course, um, Big Ten tournament, they do reseed. So if Ohio State were to beat Wisconsin, then Michigan would play Minnesota if they advance. Absolutely, like you mentioned. A lot of exciting hockey coming up right now as well. The Wolverines at 10th in pairwise for regionals for the Frozen Four. Winning this, they'll stay at 10th. Top 16 advance. It'll be interesting. Right now, they're doing their best chance. They're doing their best to make it to that tournament. We'll take a little break.
I mean, we had some great saves, some almost crazy goals. I mean, just uh, just just a really really fun and active uh, first period. Michigan uh, uh, with 18 shots in uh, the first period. I think they had 20 in the first period uh, uh, yesterday, but still a two to one score, a very similar first period to yesterday uh, with Wolverines kind of dominating and Ryan Bischel keeping them in the game. And yesterday, Notre Dame absolutely dominated the, the second period. It was really the only period where they got anything, uh, got any sustained pressure or anything. So uh, we'll see if Notre Dame comes out, uh, comes out firing on all cylinders once again. Absolutely. And Notre Dame, interestingly enough, again, uh, started tonight up in the scoring column. The first goal scored by Drew Bavaro, who had two last night. Notre Dame went up 1-0. Michigan, the last two goals. We're almost set for the second period puck drop. Uh, but this Notre Dame style of play emphasizes conservative puck action and really grinding defense. Uh, they are not a team that likes to be at a deficit. And meanwhile, Michigan, having won the game last night 5-4, to four, is right in their wheelhouse up 2-1 to one after 20 minutes of play. So here we go. Two goals from T.J. Hughes tonight. He takes the opening face off of the second period and wins it for the Wolverines. Brindley to Casey. Back to T.J. Hughes in the neutral zone. Cross ice pass to Rucker McGrordy on the right side. McGrordy skates in on the right wing. Wheels back around from the corner. Up to the blue line, Brindley, right side, Casey. Casey, four assists last night, one tonight. Back right wing, McGrordy. The Wolverines open the second period on the power play after too many challenges from Notre Dame. A shorthanded opportunity for Cole Knubel and the Irish going back down the ice. T.J. Hughes able to separate Knubel from the puck, and McGrordy races back up the left side. About a minute 18 remaining on that penalty that started in the first period. Casey, high slot, wheels around, now the left wing. Seamus Casey back up to the blue line, left side now Gavin Brindley. Brindley back up to the point, Casey thinks about a shot, has his pass deflected by Justin Janicki to McGrory, now left side. Brindley loses the puck to Justin Janicki and Hunter Strand to the Irish. Janicki up the left side, skating behind the net, wraparound shot goes wide of the crease and picked up by Nick Moldenauer off the rebound. Moldenauer in the right corner, Spins around, Strand checks him as well as Bavaro. Drew Bavaro comes away with the puck across center ice for Notre Dame. Bavaro's shot from the slot is up above the net. Rebound trickles all the way back down into the Notre Dame defensive zone before it goes, I believe, off sides. And that shot uh, by Bavaro, that quick little snapshot gets a lot of, a lot of uh, velocity on that when he scored two goals on that same kind of shot this weekend. Marcus Stapa on the opening, or excuse me, the face-off, following the opening face-off, we're about 90 seconds into the second period, won by the Wolverines. Truscott retrieves from his own end. Right side mold now, or excuse me, Nazar. Nazar backwards to Shifsky. Nazar, after a Shifsky pass, is dumped deep, attempts to get the puck to Moldenauer. Moldenauer retreating along the left wing, tries one to Shifsky, it gets away. Trevor Janicki racing down the ice with Jacob Truscott. No icing called. Truscott battling for it behind Barcheski along with Janicki. Moldenauer in there as well for the Wolverines. It comes away to the Michigan captain, Jacob Truscott, senior from Port Huron, Michigan. Estapa across center ice to Nazar. Nazar skating in the right side. Wraps all the way around the goal. Estapa in front in the slot. His shot is blocked by Bavaro. Estapa off the rebound. Gets it back in front of the net. Still hanging, and it's cleared away by Carter Slaggart. Warren can't keep it in, and it's an icing for Notre Dame. A big chance for the Wolverines. Killed by the Irish. That does it for the Michigan power play to open the second period. And, and that scoring chance, uh, the, one of the key parts of that was the patience of, of Frank Nazar skating behind the net, uh, not giving up the puck too early and forcing kind of. Fresh legs out there. Keenan Draper set to take the face off against Carter Slaggart. LaPointe, Ernesty, Edwards, and Warren out there as well. LaPointe, after the faceoff is won, a shot goes through the crease off the left side boards, rebounded by Ethan Edwards, brought back into the Michigan zone, up ice to Ernesty, gets away, picked up by Paul Fisher, property of the St. Louis Blues. The first line, D, excuse me, third line D-man for Notre Dame attempts to 
set up the offense, but Michigan, a great forecheck. Keenan Draper in the left corner, battling for the puck. Ernesty now against Patrick Moynihan. Back to Fisher behind the net. Big check by Phil LaPointe. Stays with the Irish. Up ice to Trevor Janicki. Left side now across center ice. Tries to dump one inside to Moynihan. Moynihan, a shot goes around the net. Picked up by Carter Slager off the rebound. Strand there as well for the Irish. And yeah, a penalty on Michigan. It yeah. was delayed. It's going to be on the point for the hit, I think. Yeah. Two-minute minor for boarding for Phil LaPointe, and that is after uh, the five-minute major boarding penalty that Notre Dame had in the first period. Following last night's Drew Bavaro checking Seamus Casey and, and getting another five-minute major that allowed two goals to be scored by Michigan with the man advantage. No similar advantage tonight. Michigan on the kill for the first time, and in the second half of this season, they are killing. Coming into this weekend, 83% of opposing power plays as opposed to just, a, uh, just below 75% before the new year. So the penalty killing unit uh, a lot better as the season has worn on and it's good to round into form at this time in the season. Notre Dame has it controlled in the Michigan zone. Skating along the point is Seedham. Seedham onto the right wing, up to the point Knubel. Cole Knubel with... Marcus Stapa face guarding him. Back to seat him at the top of the blue line. Left wing Moynihan. Moynihan tries to drop one off in front, and it gets away, poked away by a few Michigan defenders, but stays with Notre Dame. Knubel, right side Slaggart. Back to Knubel, up top to seat him. Ryan Seedham, the defenseman, leaves it for Justin Janicki, high slot. Janicki, left side Knubel, whiffs on a shot, gets it to Moynihan, is, and his shot is gloved by Jacob Archeski. And the Wolverines are playing very compact on the penalty kill. And um, with Drew Bavaro coming out, loves loves to shoot it from the blue line. I expect him to do so here, especially if the Wolverines are going to play back. A minute 10 on the Notre Dame power play, 16-15 remaining in the second period. The Irish win the faceoff in the Michigan zone. Bavaro pro controls across the Big Ten logo on the blue line. Right side, Fleming back to Bavaro up top, his shot. A howitzer is blocked off the left side by Barczewski. In the corner, a battle for it, and it's eventually cleared by Jarrett, Garrett Shipsky all the way down to Ryan Bischel. Here's Bavaro up the right side across center ice. About 45 seconds remaining on the kill for Michigan. Truscott to Edwards, a broken stick flails on the ice. Edwards controls for Michigan, elects not to clear all the way down. Shivsky's got a chance here, two on three. Shivsky's shot is off the stick of Ryan Bischel. Rebound, not cleared by Notre Dame. Three on one, Shivsky peels out and Notre Dame has it behind their own net with 22 seconds remaining on the power play. Fisher, cross ice pass to Maddox Fleming. Fleming into the corner, checked by Warren. Around the boards, pass Brendan Ali to Paul Fisher. Now Ali on the left wing, back to Fisher up top. Bavaro at the point. Drew Bavaro, right wing Fleming. Fleming's shot is up and over the net. Rebound stays with Fisher on the left side. Michigan back to full strength. Pass to Fleming, gets away. Estafa able to clear it across center ice before it's poked back by Fisher. Strand is in there as well for Notre Dame. Ali wraps one around the boards to Trevor Janicki. Stephen Holtz can't get there in time for Michigan. Another stick on the ice. No, it's still that same broken one. Been out there for quite a while. Warren lifts one from the corner up to TJ Hughes across center ice. Hughes goes from the center to right and lifts a pass for Stephen Holtz that gets deflected up to Janicki who sends it up ice for the Irish. Jaden Davis attempting to control for Notre Dame in the Michigan zone. Won by the Wolverines. TJ Hughes now on the left side. Hughes, high slot, Brindley, his shot goes wide left off the rebound, Luca Fantilli tries to wrap one around the net, nobody's home, Brindley was there for a moment, still stays with Michigan, TJ Hughes recovered, Seamus Casey on the point, skating right side, shot from the circle, batted up in the air, in between Bischel's legs, doesn't go through, stays with Michigan, Fantilli controlled to Hughes, Back to Casey on the left side. Casey, nice stick move around Janicki. Casey wheels around on the left wing. Up to McGrory. McGrory into the chest of Bischel, and it's stopped by Ryan Bischel before a scrum in front of the net. Prevents the faceoff from immediately happening. A lot of action on that possession, Kobe. Yeah, I mean, that's 
Brinley and Bolt, I mean, that's uh, Brinley and Jan Davis going at it. I mean, three prime scoring chances of Luca Fantilli had it uh, behind the net with Bischel out of the net. He just couldn't quite articulate the puck enough to get it uh, uh, t to get it in the right spot behind the net and somehow the puck that went between Bischel's legs did not go in the net. That was that was a weird kind of physics play. I, I don't know how that didn't cross the goal line. Goes between Bischel's legs. We saw two go through Barcheski's legs that ended up Notre Dame goals earlier, uh, excuse me, in last night's game. Off the faceoff, Notre Dame wins it, but it's picked up by Michigan. Marshall Warren had it on the right side before Cole Knubel and Patrick Moynihan come away with it for the Irish. Moynihan checked into the boards by Josh Ernesty, and Ernesty is going to go to the box for at least two maybe five yeah we'll see if they've seen this one. enough replays of that kind of penalty over the past two days to where it could be anywhere from a minor to a major yeah and that's uh that's that's a similar thing to what we saw in in uh in the first period and Right now, it will be a minor penalty on Ernesty, but they're going to go to the monitor and review it. We will have to see what we can see on the replay as we only have the Jumbotron to spot us here. In, uh, in real time, it looked a little bit... It looked like a regular boarding penalty to me. It yeah. wasn't too aggressive, in my opinion. But uh, see what the Jumbotron shows us. See what... The uh, the, the, the official shows and see if could have could have uh, avoided the contact. It's going to be an important part. Michigan was already able to kill off one penalty earlier in the second period. Now 13:33 remaining in the second frame. Minor for boarding. Call on the ice stands. Michigan on the penalty kill once again. Only two minutes. I mentioned before that these that the uh, Wolverine penalty kill has been much better in the second half of the year, about 10% better uh, on stopping opposing goals on the power play. They did let in a power play goal last night in the second period to Drew Bavaro, uh, but that was balanced out by three Michigan power play goals of their own. Cole Knubel set to take the face off against Marcus Stapa in the Michigan zone. Duke, Estapa, Casey, and Chase Pletsky out there as the first killing unit. No, it's not Pletsky, it's Draper, excuse me, as the first killing unit for Michigan. We'll have to redraw. Looked like a stop went early. Uh, we're waiting on something here. And we're back in the circle, ready to take the face off. Mustafa on Cole Knubel. The Irish win it. Back to Seedham. Seedham controls for Notre Dame. Left side. Back to Seedham up top at the point. Poked away by Marcus Stapa. Unable to fully clear, but a retreating Knubel controls in the neutral zone. Spins around to Stapa. Knubel breaks back in for Notre Dame. Dumps it deep. Tries to go after his own pass. Michigan attempts to clear, but it's stopped by Seedham at the point. Seedham, left side Moynihan. Moynihan. In the bumper to Janicki, excuse me, Slaggert. Back to Moynihan. Slaggert able to knock one in for Notre Dame. Ties the game 2-2. Two to two. A pass from Patrick Moynihan to Landon Slaggert. Slaggert, who was wrapping around the net, uh, had Barcheski in a position where all he could do is do the splits and hope that the puck didn't go in. And just a perfect pass from Moynihan. Short side to... Uh, 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 Two slagger per, per positioning gets his body uh, in front of the puck. I don't even know if, if that went off his skate or his stick. Either way, had his knee down, so all had to do was kind of just bounce off him. In any event, it's a tie game now. More where Notre Dame wants it. Michigan unable to keep the Irish off the scoreboard this weekend as they did two weeks ago, only allowing one goal to Notre Dame. Six for Michigan total in that series after a 4-0 win, then a 2-1 decider uh, in the Saturday game. 
Michigan after the faceoff controls from their own end. shifsky has got it from the corner, 12.30 to go in the second period. Nice forecheck by Notre Dame. They got three guys out there trying to pick up the puck. Edwards, board strand, keeps the puck to Janicki. Janicki tries one inside to Ali. Ali can't get past the diving Marshall Warren, who stopped any slot entry pass from happening. Ali from the corner. Back to Strand, left side now Bavaro. Bavaro, left wing to Justin Janicki. Justin Janicki back up to the blue line, finding Mastro Domenico off the boards on the right wing. Now behind the net, Michigan able to control for just a moment before McGrody turns it over to Brendan Ali. Bavaro from the right wing, dumps one inside behind the net, back to Ali, back to Bavaro from Ali, up to the top, Jaden Davis. Bavaro in the slot working around Marshall Warren, excuse me, Ethan Edwards, and Edwards able to lift it out and clear for Michigan with 11.33 to go in the second period. Fresh legs for the Wolverines. Back down the ice comes Jaden Davis, checked and has to send the, peck, the puck back to Zach Plasinski. Plasinski's pass intercepted by Phil LaPointe. Philip LaPointe shot on goal, deflected by Bischel. It stayed around the crease for a moment before being cleared by the Irish. Another shot by Truscott goes wide right. Notre Dame able to pick it up off the rebound. Carter Slaggard on the left side. Into Barcheski's glove for a stoppage. And just uh, a, a streaking Moldenauer right in front of the net. If, 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 if he just gets there a bit earlier or, or the puck's there a bit later, that kind of timing play, rush, like backside cut to the net. Um, uh, that's all time, time and the timing uh, was not there, but, but that's, a, that's a really tough play. Face off in the Michigan zone, won by the Wolverines. Here comes Josh Ernesty, fresh out of the box. Still in Duke on the left side, his shot into the chest of Ryan Bischel. And as Ernest he skates into the net, he is accosted by Patrick Moynihan before he backs yeah. off. And Moynihan's been at the receiving end over the past two weeks of uh, various antagonistic chants from the children of Yost. Whenever he's out there on the ice, the children of Yost make sure to tell him that he is not uh, exactly welcome in Ann Arbor, and I'm not sure why. We haven't really been able to find that out. I've asked a few people what their thoughts are. Um, it seems like the children of Yost just pick their target and Moynihan's it. He's had a good game tonight. Two assists on a Slaggart and a Bavaro goal. Tyler Duke up top off the one face off of the Notre Dame zone for Michigan. Casey along the left side, bothered by Moynihan. Casey able to get it around him, slides, loses his footing, and loses the puck. Up to Seedham now for Notre Dame. Landon Slaggart on the left side. Slaggart shot is blocked, and then off the rebound, Moynihan puts it in off the chest of Jacob Barcheski. And Moynihan makes it 3-2, to two, Fighting Irish. That goal certainly will not endear him to the children of Yost any further. Um, just, uh, I think that went off the skate of Duke and just a yeah. really great rebound, wow. Moynihan just able to uh, catch the puck in the middle of the slot. Um, and, and like you said, Kobe, it, it went off the skate. It looked to Tyler Duke, who was down low in front of the crease. And Notre Dame able to capitalize quickly, making it 3-2 to two in another second period that the Irish have dominated. But Chase Pletsky off the goal faceoff, rips a shot from the slot, off the rebound kept by Notre Dame. Maddox Fleming up ice to Brady Bjork, the brother of Anders Bjork. He lost it for a moment. Michigan sends it deep. LaPointe tries to receive it for Michigan, but it comes away to Tyler Carpenter, who lifts it up, and it looked to hit the bench of either Notre Dame or Michigan and went out of play for a moment. I think it touched one of the players. It's a rare scoring chance for uh, Chase uh, uh, Pletsky. Just one goal on the season. And he is not known as a goal scorer across his career. He spent four years at Miami of Ohio, only 16 total goals, excuse me, 15 total goals in Oxford for Chase Pletsky before he came over here to Ann Arbor. 
Michigan wins the faceoff. Seedham, though, able to corral it for Notre Dame. Tries a pass for Ali. It's picked up by Warren, whose shot is blocked and recovered by Hunter Strand. Strand all the way up across the neutral zone, loses it into the Michigan zone before now, excuse me, now Brindley on the right side. Skating along, poked away for a moment by Seedham. Wraps one around the net. Had Shivsky for a moment. Shivsky finally rips one from the left side. And it is blocked by Bavaro, or excuse me, Bischel, who lost his stick in net. And Notre Dame settles it down behind their own goal. Another one of those wraparound chances where just they cannot find the back of the net. 9.25 to go in the second period. Michigan nearly doubling Notre Dame in shots, 24 to 13. But the score is still 2 to 3. Notre Dame leads after two quick goals in this uh, midpoint of the second period. And that was a similar story last night. Michigan up around, I, I believe, 39 shots to Notre Dame's 23. Still, though, Michigan scored five goals. Notre Dame scored four on their limited chances comparatively to Michigan. Um, and that speaks to the goaltending issues Michigan has had all year. Truscott retreats into his own zone after the faceoff. Moldenauer's got it into the neutral zone. It's batted down, controlled by Truscott, up to Hughes, gets away, wraps around the board, seat him, tries to leave it for Boltman. His D-man pairing, Boltman, off his knees against Moldenauer, trying to secure the puck. It's eventually won by T.J. Hughes for Michigan. Hughes, left side Moldenauer. Moldenauer's got a chance for a shot, dumps it in front of the net, nearly cleared away, but kept in the zone by Jacob Truscott. Truscott, shot from the high slot, is deflected by Mar Marcus Stoppa to the left side. Casey keeps it for Michigan. From the right wing, Moldenauer. Skates around the net to Hughes on the left wing. Hughes up top to Truscott. A one-timer is flat and doesn't get past a diving Justin Janicki. Janicki recovers it for Notre Dame. Davis to the far side corner, checked by Seamus Casey. Loses possession of the puck to Michigan. Nick Moldenauer across center ice to TJ Hughes. Hughes thinks about a shot and in the process goes off sides. Uh, Stoppa was ready for a ch ch chip and chase by Hughes, but was caught off sides there. Yeah, the moment that TJ Hughes took to uh, think about either the shot or the pass, Stoppa came up the left side, made it off sides, and we've reached immediate timeout with 8.17 to go in the second period. As soon as we're out of it, Michigan and Notre Dame will face off in the neutral zone in the dot closest to the Notre Dame defensive zone. Michigan now 25 shots to Notre Dame's 13, but we've said uh, time and time again, Notre Dame just able to capitalize on some of these chances. And I mean, these 25 shots for Michigan, I mean, sometimes shots can be a, be a, be a little misleading. Like sometimes you sometimes seem just like throw shots at than that, but these Michigan shots have been really good chances, open, uh, close to the net, really dangerous. So, I mean, this is a, this is a really strong 25 shots, but uh, yeah, but I mean, Notre Dame just, um, just able to get a couple more past Barczewski and Bischel, I mean, Bischel's just been fantastic. He is one of the best goalies in the country. Came back to Notre Dame for his graduate season this year. I was surprised to see him back on the roster in December, uh, along with Trevor Janicki, who's back as well for the Fighting Irish. Face off in the neutral zone, won by the Wolverines. Warren sends it around the boards. Dylan Duke can't get there in time. Knocks down Master Domenico for the puck, though. And Duke, from behind the net, comes away with it. Tries a wraparound shot. Puck loose in front of the net. Ernesty rebound. Dylan Duke scores. Ties the game at three with 8.03 to go in the second period. Once again, those wraparound chances. We've seen those four or five times. And Duke finally gets a shot. Gets a shot. Ernesty with the rebound. He's been all, all around the net all night. And then Duke with the rebound again. Just in the right place, in the right time, and finally these high, these high danger scoring chances pay off. And Dylan Duke had been quiet this weekend, but in the last series against Notre Dame, he scored two goals, including a shorty, and then in the first series in December, he also netted one. So four goals against Notre Dame this season for Dylan Duke. Off the faceoff, Michigan wins it, gets it all the way deep into Notre Dame's end. 
before it's sent back out to the Michigan zone. Brindley facing off against Seedham near the right corner. One by Seedham to Notre Dame. Cole Knubel to Landon Slagger. Now Moynihan. Moynihan up ice. Knubel wasn't looking for it, but maintains possession against Marshall Warren. Checked and comes away to Ethan Edwards, who skates behind the Michigan net and around. Up the left side goes Ethan Edwards. Leaves one at center ice to Garrett Shivsky, who centered the first line tonight. Shivsky sends one into the legs of Bischel. Bischel. Up to Knubel, Knubel up to Slagert, Carter Slagert that is, the brother of Landon. Casey tries to poke it away from Moynihan and eventually does to the far side corner. Up to Pletsky, gets away. Now Paul Fisher for Notre Dame. Four check by Phil LaPointe. Fisher has to send one along the boards before it's picked up by the Wolverines. LaPointe to Truscott on the left wing, Truscott. Skating alongside Carter Slagger, trying another wraparound. Nobody's home. Back up top to Casey. Casey inside, a shot is deflected by Keenan Draper out in front of the net. Draper attempting it to control and keep it for the Wolverines. Carter Slagger checked into the boards, losing the puck, but it is kept by Trevor Janicki. Janicki, pass intercepted by Phillip Point, up ice to TJ Hughes, too far out in front. Notre Dame snaps it back along to the right wing in the Michigan zone. Trevor Janicki, his shot is deflected, works its way to the leg of Archeski, stays alive for Notre Dame. Janicki from the corner, poked away by Estapa. Here comes Stephen Holtz, now Keenan Draper on the right side. Excuse me, it's TJ Hughes up the right side. Poked away by Fisher, kept by Estapa for Michigan. Estapa trying to dump it deep, but it went off the leg of Tyler Carpenter. And possession goes to Notre Dame before a puck is sent up and out of play above Barczewski's head with 5.55 remaining in the second period. And uh, one team created by by poorly uh, by poorly timed uh, 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 chain changes. Both Notre Dame defensemen change. LaPointe has Hughes wide open, misses him, and then the Wolverines change from there and Notre Dame almost had a goal. On the faceoff from inside the neutral zone, off an offsides call, the puck call, the puck eventually controlled by Michigan in their own end, moves up, Frank Nazar across center ice. Nazar skating around the left wing into the slot, Dylan Duke gets away, picked up by Hunter Strand for Notre Dame. Maddox Fleming across center ice. Left side, Brady Bjork. Bjork shot softly into the chest of Jacob Barczewski. 5.27 to go in the second period. Michigan able to make it 3-3 three three after a big-time goal from the Wolverines. Ties it up. It goes. The scoring goes one to Notre Dame, two straight for Michigan, two straight for Notre Dame, and the third for Michigan, scored by Dylan Duke, Josh Ernesty, and Nazar in there on the assist. As I mentioned, the fourth goal for Duke against the Fighting Irish this season. Shivsky went early on the faceoff. We'll have to redraw between him and Hunter Strand. The Irish win the faceoff. Strand away to Seedham. Back up top, Boltman. Right side, Janicki across the point to Seedham. Seedham, his shot goes wide left. Played off the backside boards by Seamus Casey. Casey to Truscott behind the net. Michigan controlling. Brindley. Cross ice to Casey, enters it into the neutral zone to Garrett Schiffsky, who loses it to Justin Janicki. Seedham snaps one up to Brennan Ali. Property of the Detroit Red Wings, cross ice pass for Justin Janicki is much too hard, gets away from him. Strand trying to pick it up for the Irish, won by Rucker McGrory for Michigan. Over left side, Brindley dumps it deep. Line change for the Wolverines. A Bad pass by Seedham, not really seen by T.J. Hughes. He's unable to come away with a dangling puck that was in the Notre Dame zone with no possession. Notre Dame sends it back down for an icing with 4.33 to go in the second. Yeah, unfortunately for T.J. Hughes, he does not have eyes in the back of his head. If he had eyes in the back of his head, he probably would, probably, uh, would have seen that puck. Just an unfortunate break in. Notre Dame gets away with a dangerous pass and he deflected it. It was recovered by Notre Dame behind Bischel. T.J. Hughes on the forecheck had deflected the puck to the point where it got away 
from its uh, Irish possession, and Hughes just couldn't see it, couldn't wrap around. He would have had a fantastic chance, but in any event, Michigan controls now in the Notre, Dame's en Notre Dame end after the faceoff. Edwards shoots one that goes off the boards, off the rebound, comes and stays with Michigan. Marshall Warren just got checked, and he's still on the ice. Notre Dame back across the neutral zone, and a delayed penalty is going to go on Notre Dame. Maybe not a delayed penalty, but I think an injury timeout to check up on Marshall Warren, but we have seen these officials review the plays that end in injury, as we saw when T.J. Hughes was sent into the boards in the first period. Warren still down on the ice, and it's not something you want to see. Looked like it was in the head area. Yeah, it looks like two, two Notre Dame players kind of collapse on his head. Um, just really, just really unfortunate play. No penalty on the ice, but it is under review, so we could come out of this review with a penalty for Michigan, but more importantly, we want to see Marshall Warren come up off the ice. The graduate transfer coming in from Boston College, the former captain there. He's worn the A at various times this season and has been an essential member of this Michigan defensive core. He gets up under his own power and will be escorted out of the far side tunnel behind the goal of Ryan Bischel. Michigan captain Jacob Truscott there to escort him along with team training staff. Good to see Warren get back up. Those head, spine, neck injuries are always so dangerous and you never know uh, what they're going to do to your body after they happen. Watch the replay again. Warren had controlled it on the right side of the blue line, and like you said, Kobe was knocked to the ground by both Brennan Ali, and I'll have to check the other number on the right side player who is coming in on him. I think I, think I see an A there, I don't know. Looks oh, like Jake Boltman, the defender, Boltman, yeah. um, and he leveled his shoulders into Warren, so that might be the intent that they're looking at on the replay. Yeah, Ali, I mean. Ali sent him into Boltman, and then Boltman just leveled him. Yeah, the contact by Boltman is what, is what I assume they're going to be looking at. And that was right, like, kind of helmet to helmet almost. Luca Fantilli is the other D-man tonight for Michigan, so he will see extended ice time now with Michigan only having six blue liners. Four fifteen to go in the second period. Play still under review. Three three tie game. We're gearing towards as an exciting a finish as we had last night in the five four Michigan win. This time though, Michigan able to battle back earlier in the second period than they did last night. Had to execute the comeback in the third period. But Marshall Warren safely taken off the ice under his own power. That's what's most important. Uh, and we still have some legislation to take care of from the scoring box as this penalty review has been finished. Referees will come back on the ice. No major penalty, no minor penalty against Notre Dame. I have to think the Brennan Ali hit that sent him into Boltman resulted in, in Boltman's hit being kind of incidental contact yeah. because it would have been an otherwise legal hit if Ali had not been there. Um, they called a legal hit anyway, so Marsha Warren off the ice. No penalty for Notre Dame. Five on five for the last 4.15, or if somebody else picks up a penalty, but the next face off is a five on five. Cole Knubel against Frank Nazar. Nazar wins it for Michigan. Casey from around the net. We'll see if this hit on Warren injects some life into the Wolverines defensively and offensively as they looked sluggish at times with Notre Dame's grinding style of play able to keep Michigan on the ground for moments. Dylan Duke had it for Michigan in the neutral zone. Tried one to Frank Nazar from the corner. Ernesty digs it out for the Wolverines. Back to the blue line, Truscott. Truscott skates in left side. A shot goes into the chest of Bischel. Off the rebound, not controlled until Knubel has it from behind the net for Notre Dame. Bothered by Ernesty, dropped off to Landon Slaggart. Now Bavaro up to Moynihan. Master Domenico across the neutral zone. 
Mastro Domenico, he picked up a five minute major boarding penalty earlier in this game. Tries it for Landon Slaggart before play is stopped. I think their helmets are stuck. And Ernesty's helmet is stuck at the bench with Cole Knubel. Oh my God. And they get him, <laughs> they get him out of it. Uh, both skaters able to skate away instead of being conjoined for any period of time longer. 3.28 to go in the second period. Michigan now doubling up Notre Dame in shots. 30-15 to 15 tie game. 3-3 with the Big Ten quarterfinals on the line for Notre Dame. This is their season on the line. If they lose, they're done. If Michigan wins, they go on to play likely Michigan State in East Lansing as Wisconsin has put the hammer down on Ohio State in the second period, leading 3-1. to one. If Wisconsin were to lose that game or the series, Michigan would play in Minneapolis next week. Notre Dame controls off the faceoff. Shivsky from the corner trying to dig it out for the Wolverines into the glove of Jake Barczewski. And so Michigan State with a bye as the one seed in the Big Ten tournament will host the lowest remaining seed. And right now Ohio State has a one game lead on Wisconsin with that series being played in Madison. It was tied after one, now 3-1 in the closing minutes of the second period, looking like the Badgers are gonna win that game and hold on. But if Ohio State wins tomorrow night, and this is assuming that Michigan wins, uh, Michigan would play in Minneapolis instead of East Lansing. That's what the Wolverines have to look forward to as well as a potential regional date in about three weeks. Bavaro from the neutral zone sends one to Barczewski, refuses to glove it, does Barzo, keeps it in play, Estapa from the left side, Back to seat him for Notre Dame. Bavaro wraps one along the boards where Estapa is there to meet it. No, it's deflected up by Ethan Edwards and kept by Notre Dame. Seat him. Intercepted by Hughes for a moment. Hughes had it also again on the hand. Couldn't keep it. Back to Bavaro across the neutral zone for Notre Dame. Right side, Jaden Davis. 2.30 to go in the second period. Along the boards, kept in the zone by Jake Boltman who did not receive a penalty on the check by Marshall Warren that took him out of the game. Boltman checked into the boards, no whistle. Boltman slow to get up but does, and Michigan gains possession from their own end and sends it back down. Bischel from all the way out of his net into the corner retrieves the puck and gets it to Bavaro. Bavaro, the D-man, three goals this weekend. Skates across the neutral zone, leaves it left side. Brennan Ali loses his stick on the shot. Puck goes uh, above the head of Jacob Barczewski and off the rebound, Luca Fantilli controls for Michigan. Fantilli from behind the net. Stops on a dime. Up to the left side, Brindley too far ahead of him. Controlled by Bavaro to Ali. Ali is called offsides, trying to enter the Michigan zone with 1.43 to go in the second period. And I mean, uh, I, I think the, the, big, the big difference for Michigan in this second period, I mean, Michigan seems to be winning in terms of quality of play, but the two penalties uh, in uh, by Michigan, that's, that's kind of where Notre Dame's gotten their pressure. Neutral zone faceoff, won by Cole Knubel for Notre Dame. Up to Fisher, who winds one along the boards. Moynihan was there for a moment. Back to Knubel, nice stick around Dylan Duke. A splitting Barczewski able to make a save on the ice, but it stays with Notre Dame after the rebound. A fantastic save by Jake Barczewski, though. From the right side, Plasinski, a shot goes wide left. Off the rebound, Ernesty able to clear for Michigan out of the zone. Nazar in a foot race with Plasinski. Can't win the puck. Moynihan's got it. Cross ice pass to Paul Fisher. Batted away by Josh Ernesty. The transfer controlling for Michigan. To Truscott, left side, up to Dylan Duke. Duke's shot is... Blocked by Plasinski, and a sliding, falling Knubel separates Nazar from the puck for Notre Dame. Into the corner behind the net. Fisher falls down, loses the puck for Notre Dame, but it's kept by Moynihan up the right side now. Stephen Holtz to Ethan Edwards. Moynihan, nice hustle coming all the way up to try to receive it from the corner. Justin Janicki now in the neutral zone for Notre Dame. Seedham. All the way down behind Barczewski, leaves it for Ethan Edwards. Edwards along the boards to Estapa. 
Michigan sends it all the way back down with 20 seconds to go in the second period. Turnover in the neutral zone. Holtz sends it back down once again. And Sita maybe one last chance for Notre Dame to enter the zone. One man four check on for Michigan. Puck makes its way all the way down behind the Michigan net. Battle for it between three Wolverines and two fighting Irish. Mastro Domenico with the clock winding down receives the puck of the blue line, but that'll do it for the second. Another exciting period of hockey. A few more reviews, a few more goals, a few more penalties. Tie game three to three. We've reached a 12 minute second intermission. Uh, and I'm looking to say on Kobe, I don't know about you, but this might be our last game at Yost Ice Arena. So I'm uh, happy to talk as long as you want and as long as the fine folks listening on the WCBN Sports YouTube channel want us to talk about this game. It's It's been fairly even other than the shots. Notre Dame has played great defensively. Uh, and Bischel, obviously, a part of that. But Notre Dame winning on the faceoff side, uh, excuse me, has blocked more shots than Michigan and uh, has evened out nearly the penalty. Still four for Notre Dame, but two for Michigan in the second period. Um, really allowed Notre Dame to thrive with a Landon Slaggart power play. And that line of Slaggart, uh, Ryan Seedham on the defensive end, as well as Patrick Moynihan, has produced two goals all by themselves today. Uh, one in the second to make it 2-2 on the power play was Landon Slaggart from Seedham and Moynihan. And then to make it 2-3, it was Moynihan from Seedham and Slaggart. Uh, and those players have been very productive against the Wolverines this season, along with Canoop. But Michigan able to keep it even for the last 20 minutes uh, before we get there. Yeah, and when you have a guy like Ryan Bischel in that, you don't necessarily have to be a super high scoring team. Um, and uh, for the Irish, I think, uh, in the pair riser 22nd. So, I mean, they, they, they probably the need, Ten. yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah they, they have to win the Big Ten tournament, so. I mean, for Notre Dame, that I'm, this is this is a do or die period uh, for their season. Um, season if if they lose this game, their season is over. Um, so yeah, so I, I I I think the level of desperation for this third period, um, Michigan has to keep with that. Uh, has to kind of keep up with that. I mean, it's hard to kind of fake that. Uh, that desperation, but Michigan, if they want to kind of solidify their spot in the tournament, they, uh, you know, you don't want to take any chances. They, um, winning this game would certainly help quite a lot for their chances. And we talked to little tie it up. Michigan will either play in Minneapolis or in East Lansing, it's trending now towards East Lansing, but let's talk about the national tournament. Michigan is 10th in pairwise. We mentioned pairwise already with Notre Dame being 22nd. Um, Michigan right now, according to a few websites, has an 82% chance to make the regionals entering tonight's game and a 14% chance to make the Frozen Four. Uh, I think if you told a lot of Wolverines fans, you know, maybe two or three weeks ago that, that Michigan would even have a shot to make the regionals a, a good shot, um, they'd be surprised based on how Michigan was trending following that split. Three sweeps in three weeks after a season in which it seemed like constant uh, up and downs. The Friday game you play well, Saturday game not as much, and the Saturday game is the rear. But Michigan able to put a few good, uh, consistent games together over the past few weeks, and that has boosted them up to really challenging for a spot in the NCAA regional tournament for the third consecutive year. And uh, the consistency for Michigan all season, that's that's kind of been the struggle, not only the consistency across games, but the consistency across periods within games. I mean, we've seen uh, the third period struggles were um, were not there last night. That was really big to, uh, to, to finally be the one uh, to come back from a third period. Uh, to have to sit, but uh, if Michigan wants to make a run, they gotta be um, they gotta be consistent. Definitely, um, and we think about 
possibly where the Wolverines could go following the Big Ten tournament. A lot of places have them mocked uh, to go to St. Louis, but that was coming into this series when Michigan was around the 13th seed in pairwise 14, and that would put them in St. Louis if you followed the seedings and, and where the top four teams were slotted in as, as the top four seeds will go to the geographically closest sites. This year it's Providence, uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and St. Louis, Missouri. And so the two teams out east, BC and BU, uh, have dominated the top of the polls all season long. They'll go to those east coast spots. Uh, and then a team like I believe Denver um, or one of the Big Ten teams, Minnesota or Wisconsin, would end up in Sioux Falls. Um, and then in St. Louis, that's kind of a weird spot for anybody. It's a tournament hosted by Lindenwood, who's a newer program. And the reason why it's a newer, like, hockey south of the Mason-Dixon line is, is not common at all in college. D1 uh, NCAA-affiliated programs. It's Lindenwood and Arizona State, really. Um, but Michigan, for the moment, ha having been slotted in to that St. Louis spot a, a lot more than the other ones, now up to 10th and pairwise, really, I talked to Connor Eargood during the first period, and he told me it's, it's uh, they could go anywhere. They could go to all four at this point, uh, especially if they win tonight and go further in the Big Ten tournament that people expect. Who knows where Michigan will end up in the regionals, but we do know that WCBN Sports will be there to cover it either March 28th and 30th or March 29th and 31st, depending on the spot we're at. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that should be elects to cover college hockey all of the different venues are are very fun especially uh the national tournament you get to see some teams you might not normally see and going for their third straight frozen four that would be quite an accomplishment and and this would be the team that's <laughs> gonna be very surprising yeah. to make it that far um i know having been in tampa last season that everybody thought michigan had the firepower and enough of a, a, a goalie and, and defense pairing um, to at least make it in the national championship game, but we saw what happened at Quinnipiac. Uh, against Quinnipiac, Michigan lost that game to the Bobcats, who are back up in the top ten in the country um, and challenging once again. They're a sound team, um, and, and they'll probably end up in one of those East Coast slots. Maine up there as well, a fun team. I, I keep saying I really wish that that Michigan went out to Maine or a one, a, another one of those East Coast teams that isn't in, like, Boston or Providence. Um, just a cool road trip like that would have been cool. University of Maine, sponsored by New Balance. Really? One of the rare non-Nike, Adidas, Under Armour teams. Wow. Football team, every, everything in the program is sponsored by New Balance. But New Balance is making a comeback, I have to say. Is it? You know, with Jack Harlow, Kawhi. Shohei. Kawhi? I did not know Kawhi yeah. and Shohei were New Balance. Yeah, and uh, Jack Harlow's in all the commercials with him. There's a really good song called Hey You, Funky. Uh, yeah. Last game from Yost before you pass it off to Kendall Spencer. Any last thoughts, Kobe? Uh, well, yeah, last game uh, pending the results of, of tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I mean, Michigan, if they can do it, uh, in this last 20 minutes, great, but I mean, Notre Dame's gonna be fighting for their hockey lives, so it's gonna be a tough battle I, either way. Okay, well, Kobe, it was a pleasure uh, calling this game with you. Kendall Spencer is gonna be back after calling the first period, and I'm still William Gregory. I'm still here. Five minutes to go in the second intermission. Tie game 3-3. Three, three. Um, exciting action tonight from Yost Ice Arena as we welcome Kendall Spencer back into the booth. Kendall, how was your second period break? It was good. Talked to friend of the station, Connor Irigood, the whole time. That's always good. I was saying I, I, how we talked to him pregame, and he said that uh, there's an equal chance we kind of end up anywhere. We being WCBN, not be, we being University of Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywhere for the regional sites. Um, I checked in with our audience regarding the score of the Wisconsin game. They're up 3-1 after 2 against Ohio State. That game will go to 3. Uh, Minnesota won tonight beating Penn State 3-2. Wrapped up that series in Minneapolis. So 
OSU going into tomor tomorrow night, the only hope for an upset after a lot of people predicted this, this bracket to be pretty chalky, uh, and it has turned out to be that other than the one result going the Buckeyes' way last night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think anyone would be super surprised if Wisconsin kind of tried to nip it in the bud and put it away pretty easily, quickly tomorrow. We'll have to see Wisconsin kind of back at the apex of the sport after a few down seasons. Excuse me, a few down seasons. Fired their head coach, brought in uh, a new coach, and, and largely the same players, but with a couple transfers from Minnesota State. Um, have energized that school and at some points they were the number one team in the country this season. Michigan played with them well but couldn't well the whole story the whole season is they couldn't string together two games against anybody except for recently. Um, but Wisconsin back, Michigan State back still the same players though across uh, the other conferences in the nation though. BCBU, Denver, Quinnipiac. Same old, same old. Well, I obviously have a preference of where I want Michigan yeah. to end up. We're trying to go to Lindenwood University. We're trying to go to Maryland Heights, Missouri. To Centene Community Ice Center. That and is where the Michigan women's hockey team will be playing on the 13th. Wow. What is that? Ask them for yeah, advice. What the rink's like. Uh, have, you, have you been to Centene? I don't know. Um, I think once. Okay. Maybe one time. Well, it's been a while. We certainly will know enough about but the St. I Louis can, area. I can handle the rest of it. We're going to try. If it. you want to go up in the arch, you're going alone. Yeah, I, I, said, I told you. I'm like, well, what's the point of going up to the, in the arch to see the skyline of St. Louis? You can just. Uh, the mountains in Arkansas would be the only thing that I can think of that's, like, not flat. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, we'll have to see. It's four states that I've never been to for the regional sites. Rhode Island, Massachusetts, South Dakota, and Missouri. I have seen the state of Massachusetts. I have not been inside of the state I of Massachusetts. I was just in the state of Massachusetts, and then I've spent most of my life in the state of Missouri. Next year, Frozen Four, St. Louis. St. Louis. Enterprise St. Center. Paul, Minnesota this year, where the Minnesota Wild They're play. hitting up all the saints. We got Catholics on the ice. <laughs> we got Catholics in the bracket. I mean, come on. And we've got Catholics on the broadcast. <laughs> Catholics on the broadcast. Yeah, we can't. Uh, it, we're calling the game for Michigan against Notre Dame. Fielding Yost, you can look up his thoughts about <laughs> Notre Dame. Uh, I don't know if they're the correct thoughts for the year 2024 or the year 1940 or whenever he made those thoughts public. Uh, but Notre Dame. Had a had a real thing going here at Yost. 0-8-1 in their last against Notre Dame. Yeah, it had been an absolutely brutal stretch. I could tell you that as someone who spent a lot of time as a here as a fan. Notre Dame just had Yost's number. Like they were just impervious to the atmosphere. But it, it seems like it seems like it's getting them to getting to them a little bit. Three three, out of the second intermission. Uh, we're down to another exciting finish. Michigan scored almost immediately after the third period faceoff last night. See if they can do it again. It's Frank Nazar against Cole Knubel. Nazar can't win it for the Wolverines. It comes away to Ryan Seedham, who immediately dumps it deep behind a Barcheski. Slaps one to Dylan Duke, who tries to dump it across the neutral zone. Boltman had it for Notre Dame into the corner. Truscott digs it out for Michigan. Up ice, Ernesty along the right side. Nazar in the center. Nazar gets a pass but is checked well by Jake Boltman. Stays with Michigan though from the corner. Nazar back up top, Marshall Warren back on the ice. Good to see Warren, his shot is blocked by Landon Slaggart. Into the neutral zone goes Ethan Edwards to retrieve. Sends one deep behind Bischel. Who gets it to Ryan Seedham? Seedham with two assists tonight on Slaggart and Moynihan goals to Bavaro with a goal of his own along the boards to Hunter Strand. Strand off the glass to Justin Janicki on the left side. Warren checks him into the corner, gets it to Brindley, who has been quiet tonight, up to Shivsky. Shivsky into the high slot. His shot goes wide right. McGroarty there to collect the rebound. 
Wheels around the right side, tries one along the backside boards. It's picked up by Hunter Strand. Strand th to clear up to Mastro Domenico, who dumps it deep where Warren and Ali will spar. Edwards comes away with it for Michigan, not before it is kept by Justin Janicki and then picked up by Gavin Brindley. Across left side to Rucker McGrory, skates across the block M, sends it deep for a line change for Michigan. Retrieved by Paul Fisher, TJ Hughes. Up to Mark Estapa, across the center ice. Estapa into the right side and is offside. 18.07 to go in the third period, still 3-3. Wolverines obviously dominating shots in this game, 38-18. But in the second period, they had a bit of an issue up until that Dylan Duke goal of taking advantage of shots from up close, especially, especially when Bischel was, you know, kind of out of the crease a little bit. They had a lot of opportunities. They could have knocked one in there. They finally connected on the Duke goal. Hopefully they take advantage of those again. In and the our, third. our greatest fan, dependent fanatic in the chat, said that a lot of our shots and good opportunities coming off of Bischel rebounds. He's a great net minder um, and, and Michigan unable to get clean shots on him. A lot of them have come on second chances. Notre Dame controls in the Michigan zone. Fisher from the corner gets it to Trevor Janicki. Janicki back to the point. Carter Slaggart his shot too high. Standing up to glove it is Jake Barczewski. Yeah, like you mentioned, Bischel not really the type of goalie that likes to glove it all too much. One of the problems is he gives up a lot of not juicy rebounds, it's not the ones that are bouncing all the way back out for a wide open slap shot, but the ones that are just, if someone's there, they can tip it in. The Wolverine. Yeah. Nearly gave it away to Slagger, Landon Slagger, who was diving. Ethan Edwards tries to play it along the glass on the left side. It goes up and out of play, and we'll have another face off in the Wolverine end. 17-23 to go in the third, and Kendall, it seems that Notre Dame jumping on Michigan early in this third period in controlling the puck. What does that uh, what does that mean for Michigan after the slow start they had in the second? Yeah, Michigan, when they get time to set stuff up, they're one of the best scoring teams. Well, they are one of the best scoring teams in the country. They haven't had as much success on breakouts like this. Here comes Nazar on the fast break. Two on two, Ernesty gets a pass from Nazar, shoots it in to Bischel, who sits on it. And a face-off now in the Irish end. Yeah, like I mentioned, it's been a bit of an issue for Wolverines all year is just failure to really set things up. When they have offensive zone time, they're as dangerous as anybody in the country. They just don't get that much offensive zone time. They spend a lot of the time in the neutral zone or just trying to bat it away from Notre Dame, even when they're in their own offensive zone. Notre Dame is slowly starting to clean that up a bit, and we're seeing it here in the third so far. Off the face-off, it is one away by Notre Dame. Tries to enter it into the neutral zone. Does Master Domenico. Justin Janicki dumps it deep. Past Ethan Edwards and Marshall Warren. Strand chasing Warren to the puck. Wraps it along the boards to Justin Janicki. His shot goes wide left. Estapa trying to chase down the rebound. Caroms out to center ice. Gathered by Bavaro to Justin Janicki. Weak dump by Janicki. Picked up by Marshall Warren. Playing catch along the backside boards is Edwards with Warren. Michigan can't clear it out, though. It's hanging in their zone. Warren eventually does. Pass Master to Menico, but that's going to be called an icing. 16.28 to go in the third. Yeah, like I mentioned, Wolverines sometimes struggle to get into a rhythm. The early periods, even throughout a game, are often just a lot of dump and chases, a lot of fighting for it in the neutral zone. They can't really keep, seem to keep it on their stick, at least for the first five or so minutes. It seems like whenever we're calling a game together, that's the style I think we're doomed. they invariably play. Um, just the least amount of exciting hockey compared to what we see all the time from this team. Now, though, McGroarty trying to keep it in. Tyler Duke skating inside on the right wing. Wide open slot is scored. Brindley off the pass from Tyler Duke. Four to three, Michigan leads. Bischel takes a lot of risks as a goaltender. He is very mobile. He slides back and forth in that crease a lot. Unfortunately, that time he just read it wrong. He came across way too hard on the Duke shot. Left a man, left the, that side of the goal wide open for Brindley. And Brindley been relatively quiet 
in this series. Does have an assist last night, two assists last night, but uh, has not been able to put it in. Brindley, a smaller player, kind of left behind in the grinding style of play that Notre Dame plays, but able to off a rebound from a Duke hybrid pass shot along the crease, puts one in for Michigan and makes it four to three in the third period. Michigan finally pulling back ahead after tying it and Notre Dame having led it for moments in this game. It's one of the reasons why the Wolverine, this Wolverine team is so deadly when they're on. It's because everybody's a threat. I mean, you had to play that shot dangerously because you didn't know if he was going to rip it, and then you had Brindley wide open. Bit of a failure on defense there for Notre Dame, but especially it was just Bischel, who was a really good mobile goaltender. We saw an incredible save earlier in this game, just making a mistake. I mean, he just did not read that one correctly. And for Notre Dame, a, goal, a goaltender can't do everything for you. It's been the style of play that uh, to which they have been accustomed this season, only allowing more than four or five goals a couple of times this year. And the Irish on their heels once again in this game have to answer. Here's Tyler Carpenter across center ice. The shot goes off the leg of Archeski, up and into the glass, kept by Notre Dame. Boltman lets it get out of the zone. LaPointe to chase him down the ice. LaPointe. Trying to find a teammate to pass it to along the boards. Can't get it to Draper, kept by the Irish. Bjork across center ice, dumps it deep for a change. With 15-17 to go in the third period, it's retrieved by Keenan Draper behind the Michigan net. Excuse me, Edwards up to Nazar. Nazar across center ice among four Irishmen, loses the puck to Cole Knubel. Knubel, property of the Flyers. Nice stick move inside, a shot off the leg of Barczewski. Another save for the Wolverine netminder. Nazar along the left side, checked into the bench by Mastro Domenico, who has already been in the box for five minutes today for a major boarding penalty. Nazar gets it back, checked again by Landon Slager, this time into the Notre Dame bench, and a whistle will blow. Unsure what the call eventually will be. Yeah, things have been chippy this whole game. These two teams, I feel like it's such a cliche, but they don't like each other. Notre Dame the past couple years for a lot of these Michigan players has come into Yost and kind of embarrassed them. There's a lot of bad blood between these two teams, and there's a lot on the line. And Michigan-Michigan State is the most played rivalry in college hockey, but in recent history with the way Michigan State had been playing over the past 15 years before their resurgence this season, Notre Dame and Michigan constantly getting into battles whether it's at Yost or in South Bend. Um, these two programs recently have been at each other's throats. Michigan does lead the all-time series 88-72-6. and six. Notre Dame controls in their own end. Seedham tries one to Ali, gets away. Marshall Warren's got it. Four check by Hunter Strand. Justin Janicki back there as well in the Michigan zone. Puck hits a referee as Warren tried to wind it around the boards. Schiffsky picks it up for Michigan across the neutral zone. Garrett Schiffsky, big game last night. Relatively quiet today. Up to the point, Ethan Edwards. Edwards along the boards, stopped by Brindley. Brindley wheels around the right wing. A shot is deflected away by Boltman, able to keep it in the zone, does Ethan Edwards. Edwards wheels around the left wing, this, excuse me, the right wing this time. Left-handed shot is blocked once again. Shivsky off the rebound, puts a shot on the leg of Bischel, and Notre Dame finally able to clear up to Brennan Ali, wide open. Lane in front of the net, Ali diving a shot. And he was diving because it was a trip. Shot goes wide right and a penalty upcoming on Michigan with 13.43 to go in the, in the third period. Hoking penalty instead on Pletsky the call. Unfortunate take there for Pletsky. I mean, obviously. Er, Edwards in the box. They, they announced it as Pletsky. I don't think he was on the ice. Then, yeah, Edwards. Unfortunate take for Edwards there. Um, obviously, fast break is exceptionally dangerous, but Notre Dame has not been successful at those at all tonight. Giving them a chance on the power play, not exactly what you want to do with a one-goal lead. And I mean, these are, these are very precarious. And you mentioned those breakaway chances, Notre Dame not being as successful. Two weeks ago, Landon Slager had three chances among the two games in breakaway opportunities, couldn't net a goal and Notre Dame only able to score one. Now on the power play, Moynihan left side has a goal tonight. Moynihan, puck still hanging in front of the net, another rebound chance. Casey slaps it away, but Seedham keeps it in for Notre Dame. 
Right side, Knubel. Up to Seedham, now Janicki from the point. Seedham on the right side, pass back to Janicki, gets away. Keenan Draper able to clear it across center ice where Seedham picks it back up for Notre Dame. No changes for either side. Knubel right side. Poked by Draper for a moment in the slot, kept by Notre Dame. Moynihan along the left wing, now working behind the goal line. Tries one behind the net to Landon Slaggart. Gets away along the boards. Reaches Cole Knubel before a pass below the net is picked up by Seamus Casey and cleared down in the Notre Dame end. Bavaro now in for Notre Dame, second power play unit for the Irish. Up to Maddox Fleming, Fleming along the boards. Tyler Duke is there and clears it, but not across center ice. Bavaro there to pick it up again. Maddox Fleming, cross ice pass, Paul Fisher. Fisher all alone, a shot is blocked nicely by Jacob Truscott. And Marshall Warren off the rebound from behind the net, clears it all the way down where Bischel has to go to retrieve in the corner. Bavaro. Three goals in the past two days. Up to Fleming on the right side. Behind the net, Barcheski, another clear for the Wolverines as it's laid off to Seamus Casey. Bischel wildly out of the net. Brindley there to chase after him. And Bavaro able to keep it for Notre Dame. Nobody back for Michigan, though. Strand has it, wheels around the left side. Back to Fisher at the blue line. Bavaro skating along the point, right side Fleming, back to the point, Fisher. Fisher, a shot in front of the net, in front of the screening. Ali, rebound, oh, still out in front. Kept by Notre Dame, no goal. Bavaro, shot goes wide left. From the corner, a pass from Fleming, intended for Strand, gets away. Shifsky able to clear it to the neutral zone. Michigan returns to full strength with 11.30 to go in the third period. Casey's got it now for Michigan controlling. Skating across center ice, dumps it deep. Winds all the way along the boards to Trevor Janicki off the batted puck from Nazar. A rebound chance for Josh Ernesty in front of the net. Back to Nazar. Goes wide. And another shot by Nazar passing into the slot to Ernesty. Gets away. Sent all the way back down the ice. Recovered by Marshall Warren with 11 to go. Michigan still up 4-3. to three. Notre Dame trying to control. See them having it for a moment at the blue line. Marshall Warren in front of a colliding Frank Nazar. Glove for the puck, up by Dylan Duke, a shot is blocked by Ryan Seedham in front of the netminder Bischel. Here comes Jaden Davis for Notre Dame after controlling off the rebound. Davis up the left side, checked by Ernesty, keeps the puck now behind the net. Backside play to Trevor Janicki. Sends it along the boards to Carter Slagger. Up to Boltman at the blue line. Boltman. Down low to Trevor Janicki once again. Slaggard had it for a moment, tried to get it back to Janicki. Steven Holtz there to check him. Slaggard up to the blue line to Carpenter. It goes out of the zone, and Carpenter has to send it deep for a Notre Dame change. Carpenter heads up play to check Edwards, who had the puck for a moment. Stays with Michigan, though. Hughes. T.J. Hughes along the right side. Stops. Into the corner is checked by Mastro Domenico. Second time that's happened today, but no penalty to come with it. Carpenter up ice to Fleming. Cross ice pass left side, Master Domenico. Met by Seamus Casey, poked away. Hughes puts another check on Master Domenico. Backwards to Plasinski in the Notre Dame end. Fleming had it for Notre Dame. Up ice to Knubel, who just came on. Into the Michigan zone, Tyler Duke retrieves with 9.30 to go in the third period. And similarly to last night, Michigan with a one goal lead, just trying to play keep away from the Irish. Down the ice goes Duke, where it's fielded by Bischel to Fisher. Now in front of the net, Michigan able to control the puck. Behind is McGrory to the right side, Warren. Left side, blue line, Truscott. His shot is blocked, but kept by Rucker McGrory. Another pass by Truscott from the blue line into McGrory into the corner while he's being checked by Vavaro. Gets away, Notre Dame controls. Moynihan, cross ice pass to Landon Slagger. Slaggart, nice defense by Dylan Duke, though still a shot from Slaggart in the high slot goes above the net. And Knubel and Draper getting into it, into the corner behind the net. Separated by the referees with 8.56 to go in the third period. Michigan hanging on. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what three failed breakaway attempts will do to you. That was mean. I apologize. <laughs> anyway, back to the, to the Michigan's penalty kill. 
that was a really good job by the Wolverines. They were insanely disruptive, not just in clearing the puck, obviously, but just not really letting Notre Dame getting anything set up. They weren't getting an awful lot of passes. They weren't setting their players up for excellent scoring chances. There's always a Wolverine defender in the way. It wasn't just about clearing. It was really just about, you know, not letting them get any type of momentum. And yeah, that was Michigan's third penalty kill. One for three. And I mentioned, I mentioned in the second period when I was with Kobe Kendall that Michigan's penalty kill in the second half of the season has been much better than in the first half. Um, coming into the weekend, it was at 83% on the kill. I think Michigan with the two power play goals they've allowed this weekend, that's probably gone down a bit. Uh, but it's better than the number of, of just below 75% that they had in the first half of the year. Um, and, and this team has, in its own way, kind of come into form in these must-win games in the back half of the year. You'd like less, excuse me, fewer goals being let in uh, behind Barcheski, but Michigan scoring when they need to a lot of these times uh, and preventing goals when they need to, and that's those clutch plays. That's the <laughs> biggest part of winning games, really, uh, when you're a team that lives on the edge like these Wolverines do. 4-3, to 8.56 to go. Notre Dame wins the faceoff in the Michigan zone. Bavaro. Along the blue line to Seedham, back to Bavaro along the point. Tries to dump one in, it's blocked by Moldenauer, kept by Hunter Strand in the corner. Strand, backwards pass to Seedham. Seedham uh, along the slot up to Janicki from the blue line. Janicki trying to get back to the puck, trips Nick Moldenauer. That's a penalty on Notre Dame. And Janicki will go to the box for two with 8.37 to go in the third period. That'll be a great time for the Wolverines to kind of put this one on ice. The first penalty for Notre Dame since the first period, uh, and that penalty at the end of the first with about 10 seconds left after Notre Dame challenged a Michigan goal for offsides, their second challenge of the game that failed. Therefore, they got a penalty uh, for the first minute 50 of the second period as well. Uh, but Notre Dame has played a cleaner brand of hockey in the middle part of this game until now. Michigan has a face-off in the Notre Dame end. It'll be T.J. Hughes who has two goals tonight off of deflections, um, one by Seamus Casey, one off of a rucker McGrory deflection. It's won by Michigan for a moment. Notre Dame sends it along the boards where it's kept in by Gavin Brindley on the left side. Brindley to Casey, right wing McGrory, an immediate shot is off the leg of Bischel. Dylan Duke unable to put it in after the rebound. McGrory from the right wing once again, inside to Duke, slot to TJ Hughes, shot is blocked and Notre Dame able to clear off the rebound. Like you mentioned, the TJ Hughes goals. I mean, that's what you have to do. Bischel up front, straight shot is as good as anybody. you got to get crafty. Casey on the right side almost got through the legs of Bischel. Bischel unable to glove it and off a rebound. A charging Dylan Duke catches the ire of a few Irish. Nothing comes of it in the scorebook, uh, but it will be another faceoff in the Notre Dame zone. Yeah, odd whistle there. He didn't really have complete control of it. Dylan Duke just looking to follow through on that. Of course, though, going to take offense. And it'd be the same other way around. 123 remaining on the power play for Notre Dame. Quick score update. 531 to go in the third period. Ohio State made it 3-2 to two in Madison. That game still with implications for the Wolverines postseason. Garrett Schiffsky in front of the net after a rebound. Notre Dame able to clear. Schiffsky couldn't get a clear shot off. Back down the ice where Jake Barcheski will control for Jacob Truscott. 7.45 to go in the third period. Truscott charging across center ice. Right wing Nazar. Cross ice pass left side to stop. Inside to Nick Moldenauer who lost it. The puck was hanging for a moment. Nazar couldn't come over and keep it for Michigan. It's sent back down by Notre Dame. Inside of 50 seconds to go in the power play for Michigan. They do have a power play goal tonight. It was Nick Moldenauer Excuse me, that was last night. T.J. Hughes has a deflected goal tonight on the power play. McGroarty has it on the left wing. Behind the net to Casey, back to McGroarty. Excuse me, from the right side. Casey on the right, now left side, Gavin Brindley. Brindley skates in behind the net, uh, passes to Duke. Back right side, McGroarty. Rutger, pass to Duke behind the net, is deflected nearly up and out of play, stays in. Rucker McGroarty on the right side. Into Duke, tries a wrap around from the left side and the left leg of Bischel, and it's blocked. 
Brindley skates in. A few seconds to go on the power play as it goes out of play. Four exactly to go on the power play as we reach another stoppage with 6.41 to go in the third. Well, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say the puck found its way to stick in the netting. The Wolverines, as deadly as they are of a shooting team, sometimes struggle on the power play more than you think they would just because they let it get cleared a bit too often. They set up really well, and obviously not everything turns into a power play goal, but they just let Notre Dame get their sticks in there a bit too much. It'll be Keenan Draper facing off against Hunter Strand with four seconds to go on the Michigan power play, hoping for maybe something off the faceoff with a man advantage. Warren, that big lefty howitzer along the Big Ten logo. Draper wins it for Michigan, kicks it along to Ethan Edwards. Power play over. Ernesty from behind the net. Controls for Michigan. Tries one from the right corner into Keenan Draper. Gets away. Hunter Strand checked for a moment and had lost the puck for a moment. Excuse me. Janicki had it for Notre Dame. Up ice to his brother Justin. Trevor and Justin trying to get to the left corner. Justin checks Marshall Warren. Puck gets away before Trevor can keep it for Notre Dame. And it is off to Bischel who leaves it for Paul Fisher behind the net. Fisher, a St. Louis Blues prospect, up ice to Trevor Janicki on the left side. Excuse me, it's his brother Justin. Too many Janickeys, too many Slaggerts. I agree. Nazar digs it out for Michigan from the right corner. Moldenauer's pass is picked up in the neutral zone by Boltman, who sends it up and out of play with 5.47 to go in the third. Yeah, there's currently three Slaggerts in Ann Arbor tonight, at least, at least involved in this hockey game as they're Father, Andy Slagger, is an associate head coach. I'm not calling them Nepo babies, okay? They're talented. <laughs> I'm just making a point. A lot of sets of brothers. I read in their media guide two weeks ago that 17 different sets of brothers have played Notre Dame hockey with three sets currently. Anders Bjork in the NHL, but his brother Brady is playing tonight uh, with Danny Nelson out this weekend. Brennan Ali loses it for Notre Dame. It's Marcus Staffa. Nobody home on his cross-ice pass to the right side. Notre Dame controls in their own end. Mastro Domenico up to Carter Slagger, gets away. Truscott tries to pass for Nazar, keeps it off his skate. Nazar across center ice to Estapa, too far out in front. Notre Dame has it. A diving Carter Slagger had the puck for a moment, and it's poked away to Marshall Warren in the Michigan end. Up to Brindley right side. Brindley dumps it deep where Seedham will retrieve. Shivsky in hot pursuit, goes running into the boards. Patrick Moynihan has it for Notre Dame. From the left to the right side, Knubel for a moment, now keeps it, does Cole Knubel the freshman. Up ice goes Knubel, nice stick move around three Wolverines. Knubel trying to take it by himself, poked away by Ethan Edwards. Michigan unable to keep control of it though. Moynihan sends it along the boards, Will Shivsky will have to Chase for Michigan. Brindley upends Patrick Moynihan in his attempt to corral the puck. Up ice to Shivsky across the neutral zone. Neither team able to establish possession. Now four and a half minutes to go in the third. Michigan still up one goal. Edwards sends it deep behind Bischel. Michigan gets a change. Seedham's got it for the Irish. Right side Bavaro. Up ice left side to Knubel. Can't get it to Ali. Knubel gets it back after a poke from Tyler Duke. A shot by Cole Knubel, can't be gloved cleanly by Barczewski, but he gets on his knees and holds it for a faceoff. Wolverines seem pretty content to just try and waste as much time as possible. They don't mind setting up nothing in the offensive zone if that takes 20 seconds off the clock. Would like another goal, but mostly just want to keep Notre Dame as far away from Barczewski as possible. Hunter Strand in the circle against Marcus Stoppa with 4.05 to go in this game. 4.05 to go in, a, in Notre Dame season if they cannot score to tie it up or take the lead. Off the faceoff, it's lifted by Tyler Duke out of the zone. Notre Dame's got it. Paul Fisher around the boards, picked up by Barczewski, where Duke will field it up to Estapa. Estapa checked into the wall by Fisher. Ali and Strand there as well. Ernesty trying to dig it out for the Wolverines. Ends up with Plasinski in the Notre Dame zone. Having to retreat all the way back. Aggressive forecheck by Ernesty. And the puck goes into the bench of Notre Dame.
3.38 to go in the third. Notre Dame in a similar situation that they were in last night, having to pull Bischel with around two minutes to go. Michigan putting that uh, third period goal to give them the lead in fairly early in the third, just like last night, and they just sat on the puck for the duration of the final period. We'll see if they can do the same. Notre Dame wins the faceoff from the dot. Up to Carter Slaggart on the left side. Carter Slaggart winds one around the boards. Picked up by Barcheski. He can't get it out. Has to retreat to his crease. Kept by Bavaro in the zone for a moment, and then he lost it. Had to swing it back around where Brindley will retrieve for Michigan. Truscott left side. Centered to McGrory off his stick. See them all the way back down. We'll see if it's an icing. Warren giving chase. No call. Clock still running. Three minutes to go in the third. Brindley skating up the right side. Now switches to the left. Dumps it out of play as he's checked once again into the Notre Dame bench. And that area has seen a lot of action. Uh, the aggressive hits that Notre Dame putting on Michigan, a smaller team than them uh, over the past two days, surely taking their toll, but Michigan skilled enough to be up in this game by a goal. Not trying to jinx anything, so I'll knock on wood here. Wolverines really tightened up their defense. They, we've seen earlier in this game, especially a lot of breakaway opportunities. Notre Dame didn't convert, but they were still very dangerous chances. So far here, in trying to play keep away, they've done a pretty good job. Wisconsin just made it four to two, so it seems that that game will be, uh, another game will be played from Madison tomorrow night. It's four to two with 2.16 to go in the third. Here in Ann Arbor, it's 2.55 to go in the third. Michigan wins the faceoff. Up one goal, four to three. Notre Dame getting close to having to pull their goalie. Michigan sends it across the neutral zone, picked up by Mastro Domenico for Notre Dame. Four check by a stop, of Mastro Domenico wheels around. Up to Ali, Ali sends it around the boards weakly where Barcheski able to send it to Warren. Warren along the right side boards to Shifsky. Shifsky controls for Michigan, 2.30 to go. Up to Bischel who puts a stick on it, leaves it for Mastro Domenico. Any moment he's about to come off if Notre Dame can control it into the Michigan end. Mastro Domenico sends it along the leg of Barcheski, Bischel's out of the game. Michigan nearly comes away with a puck. Moynihan keeps it for Notre Dame. Truscott's got it behind the net. A battle for it, just over two minutes to go. Two Irish, two Wolverines in there. Nazar almost got it away, eventually does along to the corner. Dylan Duke sends one all the way back down across center ice, Ernesty giving chase. Bavaro there to guard the net. And Nazar now controlling from behind the net. No goalie in for the fighting Irish. Knubel comes away for Notre Dame, across center ice. Three on two for the Irish. Knubel shot goes wide left off the rebound collected by Moynihan. Moynihan's pass across the blue line is deflected by Josh Ernesty. Enough for Michigan to get a change, nearly a sloppy one. McGrory comes away with it and sends one down to the empty net, but misses wide left. Brindley there to take the rebound shot. Misses Edwards. TJ Hughes, they can't get a shot on goal cleanly. Notre Dame with no goalie stands up to three chances for Michigan to put in an empty netter and put this game away. 1.16 to go. Moynihan, high slot to Knubel. Shot deflected. Knubel keeps it for Notre Dame. Trevor Janicki on the right side. Sends one along the boards to Moynihan. Now Bavaro back to Moynihan on the left side. Slaggart below the goal line. Back to Moynihan again. Along the point, Bavaro. Right side, Seedham. Seedham back to the point. Slap shot, Bavaro. On the rebound, no, knocked away. Barcheski able to keep it off his leg. 45 to go. Brindley able to dive and send the puck out of the zone with 40 seconds left. McGrory receives it off the rebound and again misses the empty net, this time wide right. And an icing with 35.5 seconds to go. Michigan still only up one goal. What is that, five shots on an empty net? An empty net goal in hockey is the craziest thing because in retrospect, it seems like the dumbest choice you could make. Just leave your net wide open, nobody there. Obviously they'll put it in and yet every time your team will prove to you how much they don't want to score on that empty net. Parker McGrady had two chances from the block M at Michigan Center Ice, clean shots. He missed the first one wide left like a kicker in football said, you know, I'll adjust it. Maybe I'll <laughs> kick it a little bit further to the right. Goes wide right. Both of them missed. And there's been rebound chances from TJ Hughes, from Gavin Brindley. 
I mean, they were set up. Like, they were running. Like, they were passing. They, they were cycling the puck on an empty net. I've never <laughs> seen that before. No, and, then it, and, and they still didn't get it. Timeout taken on the ice. That's why we've got this break. I mean, that was incredible that <laughs> Michigan was able to run their offense on an empty net and not put a goal in. That's why it's still 4-3. to three. That's why Notre Dame still has their season alive. That's why Michigan hasn't wrapped up the Big Ten quarterfinal. And that's why teams still empty the net, because it's really not a guarantee. And this Fighting Irish team uh, has so much heart. You see it in the way they play. Uh, they're so aggressive, so hard-nosed. They get back for loose pucks, play rebounds, and, and they just had six guys down on the other end playing goalie, and none of them having any goalie accessories. TJ Hughes taking the face off in the Michigan end, 35 seconds to go against Cole Knubel. Notre Dame wins it. Michigan off the rebound though, able to control it. Casey all the way back down for an icing. It goes wide left again. <laughs> 28 seconds to go, 27.9 seconds to go. Casey, I mean that was the equivalent of a full court shot. Um, Maybe when Bischel left, he put a bunch of magnets down there. And now nothing can go in. What was the rule that you can't like shave ice yeah. and then stack it? Yeah, you can't make a little pyramid. Yeah, Mark Andre and Fleury. He must have an, an invisible one out there that's just scaring off any. There's Wolverine one chances. tiny little trip wire that no one can see. Face off on the other circle. Notre Dame wins it immediately. A shot on Barcheski off the rebound. Barcheski off his leg again. Michigan, another chance to send it back down. Bavaro keeps it in for Notre Dame. 20 seconds to go. Brindley tips it back out. Seedham keeps it for the Irish. Back to Bavaro. Now across center ice goes Drew Bavaro. About 10 seconds to go. Moynihan's got it on the left side. Into Seedham on the point. Right side Bavaro, and it's wide left. Kept by Moynihan. Three to go. One shot left for the Irish. Right side Bavaro. Moynihan. No. Wide left. Michigan wins. And Barczewski in the 11th hour with what might be the play of the game with that right pad save. I mean, it looked like it was inevitable and oh my phenomenal goodness. play by Jake Barczewski. Phenomenal read. And, and he advances his team. He's got to ice out his abductors, his adductors, his glutes, his hamstrings, his quads. His legs have gone to work tonight doing the splits. Michigan advances to the Big Ten Tournament semifinal. We'll see where it will be after tomorrow night's game between Ohio State and Wisconsin, whether it eventually will end up being in Minneapolis or East Lansing. I'd put it at a two-thirds probability it ends up in East Lansing against Michigan State. Uh, but this win for the Michigan Wolverines all but guarantees a spot in the NCAA Regional Tournament at the end of March. And it was kind of like this win was a accumulation of everything the Wolverines have been slowly adding throughout this season. You know, they their goal scoring back up to where it needed to be. And most importantly, they beat Notre Dame at home repeatedly over and over. That has been kind of the boogeyman for this team. Look at Barcheski going into the handshake line right now. He is feeling himself. And as he should, because that that play at the end, that right pad save, I oh mean, if you don't goodness. see it on Sports Center tomorrow, I don't know what to tell you. Go look it up yourself because one of the best saves I've ever seen in such an important moment. And and Jake Barczewski, um, I'd say, maybe induces the most headaches out of any, uh, for any Wolverines fans this season, the transfer from Canisius, uh, the NCAA active leader in career saves. But like you said, Kendall, he stepped up when Michigan needed it most. And uh, hopefully for Michigan, this is what spurs, you know, a Barczewski march just a hot hand streak um, that sends Michigan as far as they want to go in the postseason. And, and, and we all know that this forward core is dangerous enough to go anywhere in the postseason. The six top point scorers in the Big Ten reside in Ann Arbor, which is ridiculous. I mean, you don't want to you know, ever say that anything is inevitable or going to happen. But God, it just feels like they're getting dangerous at the worst time if you're any other team in the country. Yeah, and they're so talented. They're proven this will be the, uh, barring something crazy happening, the third straight regional tournament for Michigan after uh, the COVID season knocked out 2020 season. Oh. 
I mean, I'm at a loss for words with Bart, wh what Barczewski just did. I, I agree that it felt inevitable that off the rebound he would let one in. Um, both these goaltenders tonight, I mean, that one Bischel save where he did the splits and had it, like, mm -hmm with his right hand, I mean, both just able to glove it. They were both doing everything they could in the most important moments to try and win their teams this game. Unfortunately for Bischel, it just wasn't enough. I mean, he really was lights out. He made a couple of mistakes, no more than any other goaltender would. It just wasn't his night. I mean, he played incredible. He has nothing to be upset about. Obviously, you are, you know, your team loses, you're going to be upset, but he doesn't need to go back to the locker room feeling like this is on him. And for Michigan and Notre Dame, uh, for Notre Dame specifically, I mean, four straight games in Ann Arbor, four straight losses to end uh, a couple of fantastic seniors' careers. Um, Slagger, Bischel, Janicki, guys that came back for last seasons for a chance to, to maybe go farther in the tournament than they did this year, or last year, excuse me, and they, and they don't. And for Notre Dame next season, I, I I saw an exciting opportunity for them. I wonder the F. <laughs> Sorry, are. I'm looking at the thank Kendall's you fans thing, and right I'm now, on it. A, a, on the uh, the graphic that was put up. But I, I do want to say that Notre Dame uh, will play in the Friendship Four in Belfast, Northern Ireland next season. It's been a tournament that's been running since 2015. I didn't know anything about it. It's the only college hockey tournament consecutively played off of U.S. soil. There's not one in Canada, which is surprising, but it's in Northern like Ireland. Be one in Canada. Next year, Notre Dame will go for the first time uh, next November against Harvard, Merrimack College, and Boston University. And it's called, can you take, think of various college hockey trophies and what this Belfast trophy would be called. The B Bell Pot. Yes. Wow! It's called the Bell Pot <laughs> Trophy. Uh, obviously co going off of the Bean Pot Boston Hockey Tournament's trophy, but it's set in Belfast, so it's the Bell Pot. Quinnipiac won it in 2022, uh, and that was the same year they won the national title, I guess. Well, it's like they, they play it in, like, January and December, so they technically win it in 2022, but they won the 2023 Frozen Four, whatever. Princeton women's hockey won it this year. I think they're alternating now women's and men's hockey. Um... Those are the past two winners. And uh, that's what Notre Dame has to look forward to. But Michigan has to look forward to another date with a Big Ten opponent, uh, this time not at Yost Ice Arena. Next week, WCBN may or may not be able to cover it. Regrettably, uh, the Minnesota outcome, um, they did not credential us last year when we tried to go to Mariucci. So... For anyone hoping to listen to it on WCBN Sports, hope Wisconsin wins tomorrow, I guess. Um, and then anybody who has, like, a rooting interest, I think you'd want Ohio State to win. So Wisconsin's knocked out of the tournament. But um, I don't know. Any last thoughts, Kendall? This is my last game from Yost Ice Arena. That's really sad. crazy. Um, I don't know. Uh, pray for St. Louis. Yeah. Everyone go home and watch Meet Me in St. Louis. And um, cuz if if that's where they go, we will meet you in St. Louis. We will we meet will, you in St. Louis. We will be in St. Louis, but I guess I should say a few words. Uh, yeah, it's your so it's your yeah, moment. It's for not somebody, my moment. For somebody whose hockey interest lapsed after the Detroit Red Wings 25-year playoff streak ended in 2016, um, the Michigan hockey program has made me fall in love with the sport again and for that I'm forever grateful. Um, especially with what the Red Wings are doing this season. It's been a lot of fun. I got to call the Frozen Four last year with, with David Kramer because of what I was able to do here at Yoast. Um, and as a senior, I keep having these moments where it's it's the last of something. And I'm sad because this is, like, one of the coolest places I've been able to broadcast from, you know, the Rose Bowl, National Championship, whatever. Yoast Ice Arena, I mean – Huh, those it is, It is. I mean, it's a cathedral. Those are once-in-a-lifetime opportunities, but for this to be your, like, regular The home arena. I mean, I can insane. I, you could come here. Um, I, I, I used to come here often, like, three hours before puck drop just to do homework because it's so cool. Um, and, and, you know, I'll be back here, maybe not in the same capacity, but uh, it has been a great ride, another very fortunate bounce in my life to 
be at the University of Michigan coinciding with one of the greatest periods of hockey uh, in the, well, probably the best in the 21st century and then probably the best dating back to like the 90s or the 50s. I mean, they've been consistently excellent. So we will hope to speak to you once again, at least I will, from wherever the, the regional sites are. For Kobe Siegel and Kendall Spencer, I've been William Gregory. Michigan wins 4-3 to three against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, advancing from the Big Ten quarterfinals to the Big Ten semifinals against a to-be-determined opponent. Thank you, as always, for listening to WCBN Sports live coverage of Michigan Athletics. Join us tomorrow afternoon for Michigan basketball, the men's team taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Again, for everybody here, I can't stop talking. Good night and go blue.